Now, the next case. All parties in the matter of Hopkins versus Hemphill, step forward. Christopher Hopkins is suing his ex-girlfriend, Leona Hemphill, for the return of his belongings. Mr. Hopkins, you and the defendant were in a relationship for a period of time and lived together. Yes. It didn't work out. Yes. For a lot of reasons. And it is your claim that Ms. Hemphill has some things that belong to you. That's correct. Looks like the main thing that she has that belongs to you is a television set. No. It's the carpet. What kind of carpet? It's an African carpet made in Pumalantua, South okay. Africa. And where was the carpet? It's in her front living room when I left. Is the carpet still in your living room? No. Where is it? He took it. I'm not believing that. Okay. When I left to go out of town on the 30th at 4.30 a.m., he had access to the apartment. I'm just asking you a question. Oh. I said to you, where's his carpet? He Why do you think he's here? If he mentions a whole bunch of stuff, a drone, a TV set which has value, his passport, but the thing that he's really interested in is this carpet. That's probably the only thing that brought him here. So I don't believe that he has it, and he brought this case just so he could look at you. I believe that too, Your Honor. Right. Yes. Right. Now, you have a counterclaim. Yes. You want me to hear the counterclaim? Yes. Where's his carpet? He has his carpet. Your Honor, I left on the 29th, early in the morning at 4.30, to go to Arizona to visit my son with my two daughters. Chris had a key to the door. Chris had access to the house. He had three days to get anything out that he wanted to get. I came back on December the 1st, and the carpet was gone with all his other belongings. Mr. The television... Mr. Hopkins, did you change any of the locks in the house no when the defendant left and she did leave yes. because she did tell you that she was going on a road trip yes. with her daughters and you weren't invited and that was sort of the according to what i read in both the complaint and the answer that was sort of the breaking point when she left where were you i was in the parking lot waiting for her to leave at four o'clock in the morning her daughter her, okay, her daughter just a second. So you were waiting for her to leave. Yes. Where had you slept the night before? In my car. Was it that kind of an argument that you slept yes. in your car? Yes. Okay. When she left, I'm going to ask you again, Mr. Hopkins, did you bring a locksmith to the house? Yes, I did. You want to tell me why you lied to me at first and told me that you didn't change the lock? Judge Judy continues in a moment. What's your landlord's name? Amanda. Now, if I call Amanda, is she going to tell me that she told Mr. Hopkins that he couldn't take anything out of the apartment unless no. she was there? Uh, okay. That's what you told me she said. Yes. Perfect. Fox 13 Sky Tower Radar. Friend Leona Hamphill refuses to return his belongings. Leona's countersuing for the cost of a trip to Africa. I'm going to ask you again, Mr. Hopkins. Did you bring a locksmith to the house? Yes, I did. You want to tell me why you lied to me at first? And told me that you didn't change the locks? I did not change the locks. What can did you, you can do? I, can, I, can I explain? Just tell me what you did. You brought a locksmith to the house to... She put everything in her room and locked the door. All I was trying to do is get my stuff out the house. My stuff. Did the locksmith get you into the room? Yes, he did. So you had the ability to get everything that you wanted? That's correct. So why are we here? When I was moving my stuff out... The landlord told me I could not take anything out the apartment because she has to be there because I was not on the lease. Is that the landlord? No. Well, then you can't tell me what the landlord said. What's the landlord's name? That, I don't know. What's your landlord's name? Amanda. Telephone number. Uh, Telephone number. I'm, I'm trying to get it for you, Your Honor. And where does she live? Does she live in the building? Yes, yeah, she lives in the building. Wait, what's the number? Uh, 909. Six nine. Now, if I call Amanda, is she going to tell me that she told Mr. Hopkins that he couldn't take anything out of the apartment unless no. she was there? Uh, okay. That's what you told me she said. Yes. Perfect. Amanda, this is Judge Judy Scheindler. I have a question for you. Miss Hemphill is a tenant of yours? Okay. And I want you to think back to an incident where her boyfriend was moving out, do you recall? Okay. And 
there was a locksmith involved that he had brought to the residence. Were you present at that time? And he actually got into the apartment. That's what I understand. Did you tell him that he could not remove anything from the apartment because he was not on the lease? Okay. And what conversation did you have? It's very important, Amanda, that I get sort of an accurate picture of what happened. He had other property there. Was he told that he could not take anything else out of the apartment? Tell me what you told him. Well, you gave him a few minutes. You gave him a few minutes to take his clothes. You didn't see him remove anything else from there other than his clothes. What belongings? That we're getting to. Okay, no furniture, no rugs, no TV. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Bye bye. So it's a fair statement, sir, that you removed your clothing. Yes. And everything else remained. Yes. And Amanda stood outside and waited for you to leave. Yes. And then she secured the premises. She changed the locks. Yes, she secured the premises. Yes. Okay. Judge Judy continues in a moment. He said, you seem like you're mad. And I said, no, I'm just stressed because I knew it was going to be a long flight. So he said, well, I guess we're not going. You believe Ms. Hemphill, that's not what you wrote in your answer. He got Just a, a second. That's not what you wrote in your answer. Most homeowners draw a blank when asked what their home project should cost. Ex-girlfriend Leona Hamphill refuses to return his belongings. Leona's countersuing for the cost of a trip to Africa. Now, do you have a receipt for that rug? No, I don't. When did you get it? I, I bought it 15 years ago. Where? South Africa, Sandton City, Nelson Mandela Square. Okay. And the TV? Best Buy. I have the receipt right here. Your Honor, he bought that television for me because I paid for the warranty oh, on it. No, no, If no, he bought me no. a television... No. no just no give idea. me... Just give me the receipt for the TV. You're yeah, giving me a whole lot of stuff. The receipt for the uh, rental car. No, 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 no. no. I want TV. the receipt for the TV. Right here. Okay, now we're going to get to your counterclaim. The counterclaim says that you should be reimbursed, Miss Hemphill, for money that you spent for a trip to Africa that you didn't go on. Yes, and two thousand okay. dollars that came up missing out of my room. I don't know about that. I don't know. Two thousand dollars that came up missing from your room. It's on the text that he sent me. I have that too. He said it was his money. It was my money. I paid for the whole trip. I Just paid for everything. How can you say that? You, I, I, paid Honor, for, I paid for everything. This is the warranty on the television. He bought me a TV. He, 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 goes, he took me. I on... don't want to hear it. I'm not there. I am on a trip to Africa, which is the only thing that is in your counterclaim. Now, my question to you is, the two of you were going on a trip to Africa. Yes. Did you each pay for your own ticket? No, I bought them. No. You should you bought it. Just yes. a second. Did anything prevent you from going? Yes. You want to tell me, did he prevent you from going? When I picked him up from work on the 23rd of October, we're scheduled to leave at midnight on the 23rd out of LAX. On the way home from picking him up in downtown L.A., out to where we live, he said, you seem like you're mad. And I said, no, I'm just stressed because I knew it was going to be a long flight is what I knew. So he said, well, I guess we're not going. Okay, so... You, you believe Ms. Hemphill, that's not what you wrote in your answer. He got Just a second. That's not what you wrote in your answer. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Closed captioning sponsored by... Women get stronger and more resilient with age. He got Just a, a second. That's not what you wrote in your answer. He what got... I'm telling you... 
I was excited to travel with him, but then he told me that he wanted to meet up with the mother of their child. I felt uncomfortable about this and tried to address the situation. We got into an argument and we never went. That's what you wrote. But yes, but the child wasn't... That's what you just, but that's what you wrote. So why why would you tell me something else? Your Honor, we didn't go because he got mad that evening. On the way home, we're supposed to be going. I'm packed and ready to go. He wasn't packed. He didn't pack. Listen to me. You have to get your story straight. I'm telling you, we didn't go because he got mad on the way home. We get home the night he we're supposed you. to leave. He doesn't know you. You should have gone. You should have gone. You owe him $2,500 for the rug and $1,119 for the television. $3,116. Judging for the plane. No, Where's Your done? Honor. I paid for the TV. Pardon, excuse me. Step out. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. Were you fined for work on that job? No, I was not. Yes, he was. He did not have a contractor's license. You didn't have a license and you didn't do the work. There were a lot of people that got hustled here. Judge Judy. I'm trying to help him because he's homeless. <laughs> I'm retired with a pension, a nice pension. No future. And I got a rental property. I pay for everything. You know, I'm done with it. We're done. It, she got the red card. The whole situation. I mean, she's fired. Now, the next case. All parties in the matter, Perkins versus Robinson. Step forward. LaShawn Perkins is suing her former friend, Raymond Robinson, for the value of a diamond-encrusted medallion, plus pain and suffering. Miss Perkins, you had a medallion. Yes, ma'am. That you got that had some sentimental value to it. At some point, the medallion had to be fixed. And you gave it to Mr. Robinson, who was a friend of yours? Yes. You gave it to him. He said he could have it fixed for you. He didn't return it. Mr. Robinson said that you wouldn't pay him the $200 that he spent to have it fixed. So he pawned it. <laughs> and he doesn't have it. That's right? No. What did you do with the medallion? I went to go and get it appraised to see if I can get it did fixed. Did you pawn it? Yes, I did. Well, then I didn't say anything wrong. Judge Judy continues in a moment. I want to know why you got rid of her medallion. When she gave me the medallion, I lost it. You lost it? I lost it. And then you found it again? No. When I found it, yes. I found <laughs> it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I found it's it. It's a double talk. Real cases. Real people. Judge Judy. LaShawn Perkins says, former friend Raymond Robinson owes for a diamond-encrusted medallion he stole from her. Now, she gave it to you to have fixed. You had it fixed. You wanted money to have it fixed. She didn't give it to you, and you said... No. You, well, you just said in your answer, Mr. Robinson, let me read your answer to you. Okay. She never picked up the medallion or paid for the work, so I finally pawned it so I could get paid. The pawn shop gave me $200 for the so-called diamond-encrusted medallion. That's your answer. That's what you swore to. You want to look at it again? Can I explain myself? No. What did you do with it? You said you pawned it. Okay. I'd like to see where you bought it from and how much you paid for it. Somebody made out a bill dated four days ago? The jury man that made the pendant in 06 when my son got killed. He don't have the receipt from 06, so he written it on there. He said that's what he would make the same medallion again for me. That's not what I asked you. I asked you how much you paid for it. Back you didn't then, pay three thousand dollars no, for it. Not back then. I know you didn't pay three thousand dollars for it. So what I'm asking you is how much you paid for it. Back then, I paid two thousand five hundred for it. Show me. I don't have the receipt. Well, I'm for sorry. It. That's the person that made I'm it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's a okay. Because I don't believe that. Okay. What had to be done to have this thing fixed? Um, the fact of the matter is, I'm responsible for the medallion. We came to that agreement. I had no problem with paying to get her or making payments when she tried to extort me for five thousand dollars because she kept calling me while i was at work where texting is me. the medallion the medallion is pawned it's pawned i couldn't get it back because i didn't have an id somebody pawned it and i couldn't get Who the receipt it? somebody that i met on the street in front of the in front of the pawn shop and the reason why i pawned it in the first place because this lady started threatening me and threatening my family and i have proof here that she did that i don't care i want to know why you got rid of her medallion I got rid of it because this lady started threatening me. When, I, when, I, when she gave me the medallion, 
I lost it. You lost it. I lost it. And then you found it again. No. When I found it, yes. I found <laughs> it. I'm sorry. No, I found it. Double talk. When I found it. Put your hand down. When I found it, I called her back to ask her if she wanted the medallion back. This is after she started threatening. This is after she kept calling me with a jeweler saying that she wanted a new medallion and she wanted to get appraised and she wanted $5,000. I said, hey, I'm getting paid. I can make payments. She didn't want the payments. She said, I want you to buy me a new medallion. She got in contact with my wife and she started sending Listen all to these me. threats. I don't care what she did to you. Okay. I don't care if she got in touch with your wife. You're giving me a whole lot of double talk that I don't believe. You had it. You lost it. You found it. You pawned it. I had Do it. Do you understand? I want to know. You took this medallion I from her. I did not take it. Yes, you did. She you took it from it to her me. to be fixed. Yes. I didn't say you stole it, sir. She Maybe said you I used it. Maybe her. you. No, she never said that. That's what she did. That's what no. these posters about. Saying that. Good. I'm glad she said that you robbed it because you actually what you did was you took it and you wouldn't return it to her, so you stole it from her. No, I did not. Oh, yes, you did. That's not what I did. Yes, you after did. If somebody pawned threatened it, you, if you after pawned, somebody threatened hey, you, if yes, I pawned it. She threatened my life. Yes, I did. I was upset. I was proud of just like she was upset when she made all those posts and threatening my family and my wife and my kids. Now, I admitted that There's I owed her the medallion. With you. There's something big time wrong with you. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And later today. You live there. You ate the steak. If you didn't like it, move. If you were unhappy there, move. You're a big girl. If I didn't like where I was living, I would move. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. LaShawn Perkins says, former friend Raymond Robinson owes for a diamond-encrusted medallion he stole from her. Now, you took the medallion from her with the understanding that you were going to have it fixed. Then either you sold it, pawned it, gave it away, did something else over a period of time. She got frustrated with you because you were blowing her off and not telling her when you were going to get it back. That's not true. Well, we then, she, then she started threatening you because she wasn't getting the medallion back. No, then she what started you threatening you because she wanted to Close your money. mouth and listen. Then what you did, instead of taking responsibility, you say, I found it, but because she was threatening me, I decided to sell it, which no. you did. No. That's what you just said That's to me. I decided I to pawn it because she was threatening me. No, That's what you just said. It's you want me to play back the story. tape? It's a gap in that story. If you just give me a second to explain, with all due respect, I was working. Like I said, she was calling me at my job. I was going to make payments. Do you care what her. You're Once I do lost you, it and she started threatening me, I'm not going to pay her. I don't care what you're saying, sir. That's cool. You were going to make payments for what? Because I lost the medallion when I found it. I pawned it because she started threatening me. Once I got threats and posts on Facebook, <laughs> I'm not doing that. No. Judgment for the plaintiff, the amount of $2,500. You're an idiot. Parties are excused when they step out there. She said so many lies and so many stuff that didn't get a chance to be explained. I am so happy this is finally done and over with. But it's all good. Love stands over everything. You answered it for me, baby. I got it. And now, the next case. All parties in the matter of Clark versus Rieves. Step forward. Deborah Clark is suing her former tenant and friend, Keith Rieves, for rent, an unpaid loan to buy a car, and property damage. Miss Clark... The defendant was somebody that you knew for a long time. And there came a time when he needed a place to live. You had a basement apartment. You were having some surgery. I, I fell out of a tree off a ladder and shattered my leg. So you needed some help? Yes. So it seemed like a good idea. He moved in as tenant. Yes. And helper for you for a while. And the agreement was once you got better that he was supposed to pay rent. How much was the rent, sir? It was supposed to be a hundred dollars a week where that ended up at the end to be a hundred and fifty a week. Okay. And during that time it was agreed by both of you, because you have an addiction problem in your history, and as well as you, sir that there would be no drugs or alcohol in the house. During your tenancy there, when she was better, you wanted to drive an Uber. And according to Miss Clark, she gave you some money. And the money was a loan. And as collateral for the loan, the collateral was a sleep number bed and some speakers. Yes. Where is the bed? It's not in my house. Was it ever in your house? It was in my house. His boyfriend took it out. 
on the day that he was moving. And the speakers that he's talking about? I didn't see them leave the house, but they're not in the house. How much money did she give you when you wanted to buy this car so that you could drive for Uber? Total of $1,800. And then there was a breach of the agreement because you acknowledged, sir, that for a short period of time you had relapsed on drugs. Correct. So she told you to leave? Yes. And you left? Did you ever pay her the $1,800? The agreement was we made an agreement with each other that she was to keep the sleep number bed and the speakers that were worth $1,500. Miss <laughs> um. Clark says that your boyfriend came and took the bed the day after you moved out. She does not have it in her home. I don't know. I didn't take anything. I took my clothes. I packed them in my car. That's all I took. I got in the car and I left. Okay. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Medical marijuana smoked in that house every day. Every day, Do which I mean? really feel that that's what brought me back to relapse. You mean on crack? Yes. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Deborah Clark says she evicted her former friend, Keith Riaves, when he relapsed with drugs. She is suing for rent, a loan, and property damage. Keith is countersuing for U-Haul and storage fees. Now, were you paying her rent? Because that's also a part of her claim. I was paying her rent. I can't exactly say what I was paying her. I really do feel, Your Honor, that for everything I did around the house, like, that was a lot of work. I quit my full-time job and started driving for Uber and Lyft so I could spend more time at the house to take care of her. So that's when we became the agreement between the two of us that she would loan me the money to buy the car. With the, the understanding that when she asked me for collateral, like, what do I have for collateral? You could have my sleep number bed and my stage speakers. Okay, but and she doesn't have the bed anymore. So you owe her the $1,800. Who are you living with now, Mr. Rievers? I live with my ex-sister-in-law in Florida. Are you doing okay? I have about four months clean today. I'm trying hard. What? You, Your Honor, Mr. Rievers was doing great and then all of a sudden i started to see some some red flags and i didn't know it but he had relapsed on crack cocaine and he caused some damages in my house and he didn't pay the rent of which he owes me fourteen hundred and five dollars and he you, says let he me did... ask you this question miss sure you sound as if you're a compassionate lady yes and there's no question he owes you for the loan, for the $1,800 for the loan. How long have you lived alone? Probably 13 years between my divorce and the time he came to live with me. And when did Mr. Riavis leave? In September 2018. Where, four or five months later, is somebody living in the apartment? No. Because you're going to continue to live alone. I think so. So the reason that he was really there, there was a helpful reason for him to be there. You needed him. He needed a place to stay. And it was a good three and a half years. I understand the point that you are raising, but I wasn't down for the count for longer than a year. It doesn't matter. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Want justice? Go to JudgeJudy.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Okay. It sounds to me as if it was a reasonable arrangement. I think he probably became more than just a basement tenant. I would just imagine that if the two of you were there and just good friends, that you would occasionally have a meal together. That's true. Yeah, I would say so. I'm happy that you're four months sober. And it sounds to me like Miss Clark is happy that you're four months sober also. You owe her $1,800. That's for the loan. Good luck. Judgment for the plaintiff. Oh, Your Honor, what about the rent and damages to the house? Judgment for the plaintiff. I have a picture. That shows that, that he, he damaged a clothesline. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of eighteen hundred dollars. What about Where'd... my counterclaim? That's gone. Why? Why is that gone? Really? You want from her storage charges and U-Haul charges to get your things? Your Honor, I had nowhere to go. I literally had to pack my clothes. You breached the agreement, sir. The agreement was that there was to be no drugs in the house. But, and at she all. was the one that brought most of the drugs into the house. Medical marijuana smoked in that house every day. Every day, Do which want... I really feel that that's what brought me back to relapsing. You mean on crack? Yes. 
We're done. $1,800. Judgment for the plaintiff. Parties are excused. You may step out. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. I wish him the best. I wish things could have been different. He was my friend. That love doesn't go away. Broke my heart because we were very good friends. Time will tell right now. I hope it can't be rekindled. Kindness to shysters. And now, the next case. All parties in the matter of Hall versus Brockington. Step forward. Malika and Michael Hall are suing Malika's daughter, 20-year-old Jessica Brockington, for misappropriating a credit card, insurance payments, and for damaging their credit. Miss Brockington, these are your parents? Your yes, mother, and step, mother and father or mother and stepfather? Stepfather, mother and stepfather. Okay, how old are you? I'm 20 years old. Are you working or going to school? I go to school and work full time. You had a falling out with your mother? Yes, ma'am. When? It was like in the middle of the summer. What month? In the middle of June, July. Tell me what it was about. Well... Just tell me what it was about without seeing if it's a good story for you or not a good story for you. I would just want you to tell me a straightforward story. You were at school. Mm -hmm. From what I read, your mother and stepfather were... You had a bank account that they put money into so that you could have school. You had a car. You just paid for the insurance on the car. Mm -hmm. All those things. So they were trying to be supportive. Yes, ma'am. That stopped. When did it stop? Okay, well, it stopped when I came home from school in, like, May. And then I had told my mom prior to going to school, like, I said, Mom, when I opened the account, her name was on it. And as I got older, I kept telling her I wanted her name to come off the account. Just a second. I just want you to tell me what happened. You're going back to a story. Judge Judy continues in a moment. He said, hey, you know, college kids, you know us, we're always in need of money. So I thought, gee, that's a good idea. I'll just give him my bank number and he'll put in all this money for me. And I don't even know his last name. So why does somebody else have to suffer for your stupidity? Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Aleka and Michael Hall claim Aleka's daughter. Jessica Brockington owes for credit card charges, insurance payments, and damaged credit. You came home from school. Mm -hmm. You had a bank account. Mm -hmm. Your mother put money into the bank account. Mm -hmm. That's not a uh huh. That's a yes. While you were in school, how much money did your mother put into the account? A thousand dollars, somewhere around there. How often? About every two weeks. She put in a thousand dollars every two weeks? Yeah, two to three weeks. How much money did you put into the account? It fluctuated, Your Honor. There was some, sometimes it was 100, sometimes it was as much as 300, depending on what she needed. How often? Seems like every payday, <laughs> every, okay. which is twice, I'm sorry, Your Honor, which is twice a month. On an average, how much would you say you put into her bank account? Because she was also working. When it initially started in May, she wasn't working. She she just recently start, started working. So we were putting at least a $100 in her account on the 15th and the 30th of, of every month. Okay, so $200 a month. At least, yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay, for how many months? From January to May. We cut, cut her off in May. So about $1,000. Well, that's, so that's about right. A couple of bucks more. Okay. Let's hear what happened because something happened that cost yes. your mom money. Okay. So while I was about to leave school in May, which caused the argument when I came home from school, I met a friend and his name was Chauncey. And you know, college students, we don't really have money like that. So we're all broke. So he came to me like, I was telling him about my money problems that I was having. And my parents, they were really tired of me asking them for money all the time. So he made it seem to me like, oh, I'll help you out. I'll give you some money. I'll just put the money in your account. He didn't really go into details about... So you gave him your banking information? Yes, ma'am. And mm. it ended up that whatever he did, he emptied your bank? Yes. And how much did he take? When it happened, I got locked out of that account, so I'm not really sure about how much. How much? Twenty-five, four, fourteen, eighty-three. Now, your mom took you to the police station. 
so yes, that you could tell them about this guy? Because mm -hmm. this was a story you told. You didn't give the police his name. I didn't give the police his name because when my mom told me what happened, I called him and at first he seemed like he was gonna, you know, give me the money back so I can give it to my parents. Oh! Well, <laughs> well, that really didn't work out because like after about a couple of days, I didn't hear from him anymore. So, yeah. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Are you in a family dispute? Go to JudgeJudy.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Now, he said he was going to put money into your account, and he did all this, Miss Brockington, because you were in need of money. You said it was difficult to get money from your parents. Yes, and I want you to know, I've had a lot of 20-year-olds, children, grandchildren, and I know that Young people think that old people are stupid, but we're really not stupid. Yes, ma'am. How much money did Chauncey give you? I didn't get any money from it, which is why I feel like I shouldn't have to pay them anything. <laughs> because I got scammed. Well, you got scammed. Why should somebody else, if, for your stupidity, why should somebody else have to suffer? If you got scammed, that means you were stupid. And if you're stupid, why does somebody else have to suffer for your stupidity? That's life. That's responsibility. If you were stupid enough to get scammed by somebody who says, oh, I'll help you out. Just give me your routing number and your PIN number and I'll help you out. And you said, hey, you know, college kids, you know us, we're always in need of money. So I thought, gee, that's a good idea. I'll just give him my bank number and he'll put in all this money for me. And I don't even know his last name, which is what you told the police. So if you're stupid, why would I have to suffer? Why would Bird have to suffer? Why would your mother have to suffer? Why would your stepfather have to suffer for your stupidity? Well, they wouldn't have to suffer for it if she just would have took her name off the account. Judgment for the plaintiff name out to 2514. We're done. Thank you. Are these excuse? You may step out. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. I just hope that just Jessica under understands that her actions affect other people and they, they have con consequences. That was pretty harsh. I feel like it wasn't my fault because I'm the one that got scammed. I love my, my daughter dearly, but I, I need her to realize his fault. He needs to be here, not me. If everybody's not her friend. And, and that there are people out here look, looking to take advantage of her. Now that it's over, hopefully me and my mom and my stepdad can just work it out. She will be working and adulting. Because I love my parents, but they kind of harsh, but I understand. The bank is closed. And now the next case. All parties in the matter of Brown versus Butler. Step forward. 23-year-old Anthony Brown is suing hat designer Kyle Butler for a refund for hats he purchased on behalf of his grandmother. Mr. Brown, you have ordered some custom-made hats. I see that that's what these are yes. from the defendant in the past. Mm -hmm. How many hats have you ordered from him? Probably about five. And you had to have been happy and satisfied with his workmanship because you kept ordering them. Yes, ma'am. You recently ordered another hat. Mm -hmm. And you already had a hat that had to be resized. Mm -hmm. You ordered another hat and paid for it. What was that hat supposed to look like? It's supposed to be a dome shape with two hat pins and a veil on it. And where did you get the inspiration for well, that? Just looking at like a previous work that he's done and just that's something that my grandmother, she wanted for her day to wear for a appreciation service. So you get these hats for your grandmother? Mm-hmm. She's a first lady. How old is she? She's 67. She loves hats? She loves them. How many does she have? A lot. I, I, it's a lot. <laughs> Judge Judy continues in a moment. He called my hats ugly. Yes, he did. He what? He called my hats ugly. Oh, why did you call his hats ugly? This is not what I paid for. He said they were ugly, and he inquired about that one. That and was it, why I sent it. And, and when I inquired about it, it's still not worth the same amount of money. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Anthony Brown says, hat designer Kyle Butler owes for a refund for hats he never received. Kyle is countersuing for slandering him on the internet. So you get these hats for your grandmother? Mm-hmm. She's a first lady. 
How old is she? She's 67. She loves hats? She loves them. How many does she have? A lot. I, I, it's a lot. <laughs> the one that had to be resized was which hat? Can I see it, please? And is that the one that he ordered? No, ma'am. Do you have any sort of photograph of the one that you wanted him to make for you? Um, he did not send me a photo of the hat that he's supposed to be made. Okay, and this hat was the one that you wanted... I previously ordered. ...ordered and paid for. Yes, ma'am. And you had it in your possession, you mailed it back to him. Mm -hmm. And when I mailed it back, I put $500 of insurance on it, and I have the receipt here. I'd like to take a look at it. How much did you pay for this hat? $445. We certainly are masterful. <laughs> okay, so he insured the hat that he sent to you to be resized for $500. Did you receive it? Yes, ma'am. Did you resize it? Yes, ma'am. And the new hat that he had ordered, he also paid for? Yes, ma'am. And how much did he pay for that hat? I believe it was about three eighty. Is that right? Three ninety. And you made him that hat? Yes, ma'am. And you shipped both hats back to him? I did. And you put $100 of insurance on both hats? Yes, ma'am. And he never got the hats? He did not. When you sent him the previous hats, the ones that he did receive, because he received five altogether, right, from you? Mm -hmm. How did you insure them? Usually, when I insure the hats, it's the, the, the standard insurance, which is included in the price of the hat. And it's just the basic standard insurance. Well, this additional insurance that covered the full amount of the hat, or even more, only cost $3.50. Did you send the two hats in one box or two? One box. So you had approximately $800 worth of hats that you didn't put additional insurance on, and you could have insured them because you knew how much they cost for the full amount, which it would have cost you $3.50. No. $3.49, yes, that's what it would have cost you, $3.49. Or if you insured both, it would have cost you $7 for insurance. Yes, ma'am. Didn't you think that, that was a good idea? No, ma'am, because I wasn't supposed to be overnighting this package. I had already gone over the budget of the hat to ship the hats overnight. The hats were already late. What I do takes a certain amount of time and effort. And what I did for him, which I wasn't supposed to be doing, which was I overnighted these hats already. You, listen, you didn't have to accept the job. Judge Juby continues in a moment. You advertise online? Yes, ma'am. And he wrote something negative about your company after this happened? He said some very negative things. No, no, tell, tell me what he said. I don't remember the post, but there is a video. Let me see. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Anthony Brown says, hat designer Kyle Butler owes for a refund for hats he never received. Kyle is countersuing for slandering him on the internet. Listen, you didn't have to accept the job, so you can't complain now that you accepted the job and then you had to overnight the hats. All you had to do was say to him, listen, the new hat that you ordered, I can't get back to you in time, and the resizing one isn't easy. I can do that. That's not a big problem. But the new one that you want, I can't get back to you, and either I'm not going to take the order, but you didn't want to lose his business. It was already in process because he had paid me in increments. He sent the last payment for the order the week of his event. And? He did not tell me he was going to do that. So I wasn't sure if I would be able to do it, but I'm usually able to move quickly. Your Honor, I do what I do, and I'm great at it. Great. Terrific. You should have insured the hats. You didn't get the hats. No, ma'am. Neither one. The one that you paid for? No, ma'am. That was to be resized, or the one that cost $390? No, ma'am. You did get a $100 insurance check. Yes, ma'am. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And I do have the check stub, if you would like. You cashed it? Yes, ma'am. The two hats that you had were $835 mm -hmm. together. You got $100 back. Yes, ma'am. Just for the plaintiff for the amount of $735. We're finished. Wait, Thank Your you. Honor, I have a countersuit. Yeah, I know you do. Okay. You want to show it to me? You advertise online? Yes, ma'am. And he wrote something negative about your company after this happened. He tagged me in one, not one, but two posts. Because he wasn't responding. Just a second. And he said? He said some very negative things. No, no, just tell me what he said. I don't remember the post, but there is a video. I don't remember the post, but he went on in an 11-minute rant on social media about my business. That it was bad? Or yes. That, that it was bad or that he didn't get his property? Yes. He, yes what? Yes, ma'am. That it was bad? Well, he couldn't say it was bad because he had used He called my hats ugly. Yes, he did. He what? He called my hats ugly. 
Oh, why did you call us hot tub? This is not what I paid for. He said, I didn't know he was sending these two hats. Is that what you sent instead of the hats? Yeah. I sent them as replacements to try and make up for the fact that the post office hasn't sent okay, his stuff give them to, him back yet. to him. Yeah, he can hey, I don't want them. Yeah. Fine. He said they were ugly and he inquired about that one. That was and why it, I sent it. And, and when I inquired about it, it's still not worth the same amount of money. No, no, just, just give it back to me. <laughs> He's allowed to comment. Mr. Butler, he's allowed to comment if he's dissatisfied with your service. Yes, ma'am, but he's not allowed to drag my business on social media like that and tag me in these actual things. It wasn't right. Show me. It may not have been right, but he's allowed to do that Show if you, you advertise. I have the video. Let me see. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Want justice? Go to judgejudy.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Mr. Butler, he's allowed to comment if he's dissatisfied with your service. Yes, ma'am, but he's not allowed to drag my business on social media like that and tag me in these actual things. It wasn't right. Show me. It may not have been right, but he's allowed to do that Show if you, you advertise. I have the video. Let me see. Here you go, sir. He is allowed to do that. He's not allowed to say that you're a burglar, but he's allowed to say you have ugly hats. And he's allowed to say he didn't get his property and that you took his money. He's allowed to say that. But I didn't do that. Yes, you did. Oh, I'm telling you that you should have insured the house for what they were worth. I don't agree. I don't care I whether you agree. Apologize because it's still not the right items. Still not the what what I paid for. What's wrong with that? A showstopper in this little ugly head. I don't even. She probably not even gonna wear. Yeah, I'm, I'm still upset. Okay. We're done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank $735. You. We're done. Why is excuse when they step out? Judge Judy continues in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. I have a right to do anything that I want to do. I mean, we, it's, we're, we live in America. I think it was unfair. I think it was wrong. I'm ready for a new hat, and it will not be by Cal Butler. I feel like I did the best possible job to, my, to, to the best of my ability. I love Judge Judy. And I was wrongfully accused of doing something that I did not do. And I'm glad that I'm getting my money. He should have not done that on social media. Period. And now, the next case. All parties in the matter, Bernstein versus Smiley. Step forward. Joan Bernstein is suing her ex-landlord, Eric Smiley, for the return of her pet deposit and moving expenses. Miss Bernstein, you rented a property that Mr. Smiley manages, and you terminated your lease early because you were not satisfied with the premises after you moved in. Mr. Smiley acknowledges that he allowed you to terminate the lease early as long as he was able to re-rent the property, and he was able to re-rent the property within a very short window of time. You want your security deposit back. So far, Mr. Smiley, is everything that I said accurate? Yes. You agreed if the place was re-rented immediately, you would let her out of her lease. And she gave you a security deposit of how much? There was a $1,000 pet deposit. I have two dogs, and I gave them a first and last month's rent, which rent monthly rent was $3,250. So they received a total of $7,500 from me. But you were there for a month, the first month. You moved yes. in. Yes. So then they had the last month's rent plus a $1,000 pet deposit. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I wanted to indicate you had said that I was suing for the return of the pet deposit. I'm also suing for my moving costs because I had to vacate the premises. Oh, I'm not paying you for your moving costs. Okay. So what are you suing for? The return of your pet deposit, which is $1,000? Yes, Your Honor. So one uh, bit of discrepancy is in the lease. It clearly states in bold writing you cannot use your security deposit as your last month's rent. We're, just, we're not talking about security deposit. We're talking about the pet deposit. That's what she's suing for, $1,000. Right, but part of the deductions were for a late fee because she didn't pay rent for the last month. Did she pay rent for every month that she was there? Until the last one, yes. Did you use her security deposit for her last month's rent? Did we you had keep to. her security deposit? Yes. Fine. Then what she's suing for is her pet deposit. Now the ball is in your court. Pet deposit. Did her pet cause any damage? Yes. The... What damage did her pet cause? So the front door was scratched. Show me. And I acknowledge, Your Honor, the damage. There's a dispute as to the cost of the repair. Okay. So let me see the front door and then show me how much the door is to repair. And that comes off your pet deposit. So it's $350. What kind of a dog do you have? I have two dogs. I have a plot hound and a beagle. The beagle did that. 
Did you leave any debris in the house? No. That's not true. Okay, but that wasn't caused by the pet. Correct, but remember, her security deposit was used as rent, which you're not supposed to do. So okay. we don't, we no longer have a security deposit to take deductions from that. So cleaning debris outside the house and getting the property professionally clean, which was promised to us, did not happen. So now the new t tenant came in on a bad foot because the property was dirty, trash in the yard, and those are deductions that would come Can off the I regular security deposit. Can I see the trash in deposit. the yard that she left? I don't have any pictures of that. Well, then that doesn't help me. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Have you been cheated? Go to JudgeJudy.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do you have any other photographs of any other damage that you are claiming? No, just the invoice from the construction company. I don't company. care about your invoice. Well, you can see what the owner I don't had to care pay. about your invoice. The door, she acknowledges the damage, which means she still has $650 of her pet deposit. If well, you have any other pictures of damage, I'll look at it. Do you have any other pictures of damage? No, but the Good. property had to be cleaned. Show me. Show me what it looked like, and I'll determine whether or not it had to be cleaned. I'm not relying on you to tell me it had to be cleaned. I have to look at it. Show me pictures. Got a picture of the door? That's how you have a picture of the trash in the yard. You have pictures of what was left behind. I mean, I could show you text from the new tenant saying how what a mess the place is. I'm not, I'm not interested. Then you have the new tenant here. I don't listen. Okay, that's my mistake for not bringing other mistake. witnesses. Judging for the plaintiff in the amount of six hundred and fifty dollars. Thank finished. you. Thank you. Have you. Have Excuse me. Step out. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. The owners didn't charge her for a lot of stuff they could have. I was very happy with Judge Judy's decision. I felt it was equitable. Uh, the owners are really nice people. They don't want her to be there if she doesn't want to be there. Don't let landlords take advantage of tenants. And now the next case. All parties in the matter of Samwell versus Lovell. Step forward. Andre Samwell is suing cookie business owner Katie Lovell for failing to deliver a cookie order, the cost of new cookies, and punitive damages. Mr. Samwell, you found the defendant online. You were having some sort of Christmas celebration, and you ordered some personalized Christmas cookies with a picture on it. Was it your picture? It was my picture and my uh, two witnesses also here. It was a group photo. And you found her online on which site? On Facebook, and then I was able to contact her through Facebook. And you placed an order and paid for them? Correct. You were having a party when? We are having our annual Christmas party at uh, Park Country Club, and every year we do surprise gifts. This year was my year to choose a surprise gift to give all my guests and friends, and it was going to be the cookies with the faces on them. And on what date was the party? The party was going to be on uh, December 23rd. And on what date did you contact Miss Lovell? That was November 28th. Can I see that paperwork? Sure. Yes, sir. How much did you pay for the cookies? For three dozen, Your Honor, I paid one hundred and ten dollars. Okay. Do you have any other communication with her? Yes, I do. I have all the text messages. I'd like to see them. Sure. Here you go, Your Honor. I sent her a text message on the twenty-first requesting my cookies. Shh, shh, shh. What was the nature of your illness? I had a cold. I want to see the text when you say that you ascribe to him the statement, "I need the cookies whenever." That's what you say here. You say, you didn't give me a date when he needed the cookies. But I thought that you were going to be done by Christmas. He needed them by Christmas. Not a specific date. Was not given. Well, Christmas is a specific date. Every year, it's the same date. Yes. <laughs> I understand that. What I'm saying is he didn't say a specific day by Christmas, so I figured he needed them for Christmas, not for a party that was before Christmas. A party that was before Christmas was two days before Christmas, the 23rd. That's not unreasonable. Should have been done, because really that's not what this is about. You acknowledge the fact in all of these emails that I see back and forth, all of these text messages, that you were going to return his money to him because you didn't get him what you promised you would get him on time. But what he had done was he put up a post about you that was unflattering, that he was a dissatisfied customer. I mean, I read the post. That's what he said. He was a dissatisfied customer. You didn't do what you're supposed to do. You stole his money and didn't give him his product. That's pretty much what he said, right? Yes. I mean, he didn't accuse you of anything else, of being a thief, of being a robber. That's what he said. A... I think it said that on there. Oh, because of the cookies. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Did you make these cookies? No. And is this your cover page? Yes. Well, that's misleading. But it's just a background. 
It's misleading. The connotation is that you made these if it's on your page. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Andre Samuel says, cookie business owner Katie Lovell failed to deliver a cookie order. Katie is countersuing for defamation of character, slander, and loss of income. Took his money, you didn't give him his product, so you stole his money. But he agreed to take the post down, and he didn't. So that's why I didn't give it to him. And then himself, friends, and family members went onto my page and... I mean, I can show you just horrible things. There's a lie saying that I don't even make my own cookies. I order them from another company, and I'm just the middleman. And Is that true? I don't even make just my own cookies. Second. Is that true? No, that's not true at all. Your Honor, you have evidence over there that I also gave you that shows we looked up the cookies that she had on her pictures, and she was using the pictures from the website from another cookie maker. It was a cover photo from Pinterest that was a Christmas cookie, like, background. So what you're suggesting is the photo that she put up on her web page advertising her cookies were cookies that were made by another company. You are correct, Your Honor. And she acknowledges that just now, correct? Yes. Well, that's misleading to say but it the was, least. But it was a background. It, I don't care if it was background, foreground. That's what you were putting up to convince people to buy your product. You put a picture of a product that wasn't yours. Did you make these cookies? Oh, no, no. That's the company itself, Your Honor, that actually makes the cookies. Okay, so it was just for a couple photo show me okay the only one i have are these this is the company itself and let me see i'm not sure i just found it on pinterest let let me see your cover page is that what you're showing me yeah your cover page did you make these cookies no and is this your cover page yes well that's misleading but it's just a background (laughs) it's misleading okay i understand if i were looking at this and I would say, oh, this lady makes great cookies. Look how beautiful they are. It doesn't say made by someone else, by Mrs. Stahl's cookies. The connotation is that you made these if it's on your page. Do you understand? I understand what you're saying. All right, so let's not argue about it. You have to give him his money back. But... You have to give him his money back. $110, is that what you paid? Well, it was just $110 for the cookies. I had to go get other cookies, too. I don't care about your other cookies, sir. And you shouldn't eat how about, cookies. How about, the ti- how about the time, too? How about what? How about the time to, you know, that I had to put in? I had to leave work early. I had to go get... $110. You know, $110. And he is, Miss Lovell, he is allowed to say he is very dissatisfied with your product. Yes, but he put on there stating that takes your money, doesn't make any cookies. Your Honor, um, I have to disagree with the amount just because... Uh, Shh. I don't care what you want. That's what you're getting back, $110. I'm not paying you for your time. The thing is, is that our annual party means so much to us. Listen to me. Don't say anything else. You don't want to annoy me. (laughs) (laughs) Judge Judy continues in a moment. Are you the victim of a scam? Go to JudgeJudy.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Oh, I see other people, something, who is this cookie girl? Let's put her out of business. But he didn't say that. That's his friend saying that. I don't care what he, his friend... There's a comment from him that says she does not make her own cookies. Cookies. Well, She's if I were looking at your Facebook page where you advertise your cookies and I saw cookies that you didn't make, I could say she doesn't make her own cookies. It's not actionable. You have no lawsuit against him. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $110. We're done. Thank you. Eyes are excused and they step out. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. He ruined my business, basically. Buffalo's kind of a small town, so word does get out, and it gets out real quick. And I was fired from my other job because of him. So if if it was on me, I don't think it was me. It was just me stating the facts. He wanted them by Christmas. Well, December 23rd was when I texted her, but the 23rd was the party. They would have been done by Christmas. I was expecting them maybe a week before. But all of a sudden, he changed his mind and wanted them a couple days earlier. Not getting the cookies on time was kind of, you know, a little aggravated. I couldn't make the cookies overnight that's the way the cookie crumbles at this point we're done and now the next case all parties in the matter williams versus brown step forward takia williams is suing her former roommate jasmine brown for causing her car to be impounded and jumped and for traffic tickets we're all gonna tell the truth today hooray yes (laughs) 
Ms. Williams, it is your claim that the defendant drove your car and had an accident. Correct. And as a result of the accident, you lost the car. Correct. Because the car was impounded, couldn't get it out in time. Correct. Whatever, the fees got too high, so you lost the car. On what date did you drive her car? I kind of forget, really. August, I think it was like the 5th. And Miss Williams was out of town? Yes. And you were living together? Yes. She had children? Mm -hmm. Young children that you were taking care of? Yeah. How old were the children? Um, Nazir, I believe he's like eight, and Makai's three. Do you work other than taking care of the children? At the time, no, I was not. And how long was Miss Williams out of town? Just for like a couple of days. What's a couple of days? Like the weekend, two days, maybe. How many accidents have you been in in your life, Miss Brown? One. This one? Yes. And this didn't happen in 2002. This happened in May of 2018. Yeah. Yes, that would be a yes. So when we're not talking about generations ago, and we're not talking about an old person like me who has faded memory, you know, I can't remember things really specifically anymore. Was she gone for a day, two days, three days? Two days. During that two-day period, did you take the children out in the car? Yes. Where did you take them? I went and made a couple runs. What's runs? Grocery store. Where else? I want you to think, don't question when you're answering me, don't answer me with a question mark in your voice. Grocery store? I don't know whether you went to the grocery store. I mean, like, I can't really recall. Well, I want you to think. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Nothing that I like better is to get somebody who's lying to me and really humiliate them. Because by you coming here and lying to me, you say, oh, she's stupid. And it is therefore my joy to make you look as stupid as I can. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Takiya Williams says her former roommate, Jasmine Brown, took her car without permission and caused it to be impounded and jumped. Jasmine is countersuing for loss of property and an illegal eviction. I had the car for two days, then I had an accident with the car. Before I had the accident, this is what I was doing. I had the kids in the car. Where did I take them? Besides the grocery store and maybe other family members' house, nowhere with them. Well, who did you leave them with if you were driving the car without them? My sister. How old is your sister? 32. And she would come to the house? Yes. At the time of the accident in May of 2018, did you have a valid driver's license? No. How did I know that? It's because I'm old and losing my mind, but I know things. I just knew you didn't have a driver's license. Right. How old are you? I'm 27. A 27-year-old either had a driver's license and lost it, because I have a lot of grandchildren, you know, that age. Nobody who's 27 never had a driver's license, right? Yeah. <laughs> so when did you lose your driver's license? They became suspended uh, January of Not last year. they. How many driver's licenses did you have and how many jurisdictions that became Well, I suspended? have a couple different suspensions, so... Suspensions for what? Different type of tickets. Like what? Speeding tickets, mostly. I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. When you left your children in her care, did you know she didn't have a driver's license? I didn't leave my children in her care. I left my children in the care of her sister, Latricia. Did you know she didn't have a driver's license? I knew that she had a driving privileges to and from work. I knew that. Well, that's usually, they call that a hardship license. Right. If you have a hardship, you can go to and from work. Mm -hmm. How did you know she had a hardship license? Because she proved it to me. She showed me the paperwork. A hardship license is sometimes given when you have an infraction that's a result of driving while under the influence of alcohol. Okay. Did you ever have one of those? No. When did you get a hardship license? February of 2018. Was that also suspended? No, I still have those. Then what were you doing going to visit family members and making runs to the grocery store in the car with children for if you had... <laughs> If you had a well, license the, that allowed you to go to and from work only. No, the uh, it wasn't just for work purposes. It says it in there that I'm allowed to make grocery store runs, also hospital runs. I was pregnant. It's a couple different things listed in my privileges that I'm allowed to do. There was nothing about their visiting family members. Yeah, that part, no. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Judy continues in a moment. So you were in the emergency room. Yes. Get me the phone number. And then you're going to call and put me on the phone and just have verified that you were there. And if you waste my time, it's not going to be happy or pretty for you. Do you understand? Do you yes. want to start over again? Yeah. Great. 
Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Takia Williams says her former roommate, Jasmine Brown, took her car without permission and caused it to be impounded and jumped. Jasmine is countersuing for loss of property and an illegal eviction. What was the date of the accident? August 5th. What day of the week was that? On a Sunday. Where were you going? To the hospital. What time? You, you know I'm going to find... You know, Miss Brown, you remember when I came in and I said, we're all going to tell the truth here? <laughs> because nothing that I like better, really, it's part of my joy, is to get somebody who's lying to me <laughs> and really humiliate them. <laughs> because by you coming here and lying to me, you say, oh, she's stupid. That's the way I see it, you see. And if she's stupid and she represents the justice system, then the justice system is stupid. And people like me can get over the justice system because the justice system is stupid. And it is therefore my joy to make you look as stupid as I can. Do you understand? Yes. Which means that I can call the hospital and find out if you had an appointment that day. Do you understand? It wasn't for an appointment. (laughs) (laughs) You mean you were going to visit somebody? No, I was going to the emergency room. For? I was having pains. I told you I was pregnant at that time. It's not that I don't care that you were pregnant, but it's not particularly relevant to me. On the 5th of August, did you go to the hospital? Yes. On the way home, this accident happened? Yes. So you were in the emergency room? Yes. Of what hospital? University Hospital. Get me the phone number. And then you're going to call? And put me on the phone and just have verified that you were there on August the 5th of 2018. And if you waste my time, it's not going to be happy or pretty for you. Do you understand? Do yes. you want to start over again? Uh-huh. Do you want... Do you, look at me. Do you want to start over again? Yeah. Great. Where were you going on August 5th? I went to someone's house. Whose house? A friend of mine. That's not listed on your license. Correct. And you had an accident. Yes. And she lost her car. What kind of car was it? 2005 Chevy Cobalt. Look it up, please. (laughs) 1,097 to 1,400. Great. Now you have a counterclaim. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Have you been cheated? Go to JudgeJudy.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. The counterclaim is that she threw you out after this incident. Yes. So you want her to pay you $2,500 for an illegal eviction. Well, for my belongings that she didn't let me get. What belongings didn't she let you get? I had a brand new television and all of my clothing. Did you get any tickets when you were driving the car? One ticket, yes. And how much was that ticket? Um, She didn't tell me how much it cost. She just informed me that one had came, and I told her that I would take care of it. Did you? Not yet, no. Well, we're talking about six months ago. She's not getting any younger. How much was the ticket? One was for 95 and one was for 105 so it was actually two tickets. Did you pay them? I have not paid them yet, no. Nor do you intend to, because the car's gone. Right. Perfect. So she owes you $1,400. Did you keep her TV? I threw it out. What kind of TV was it? I think it was a Sony. I'm not sure. It was a flat screen. Why did you throw it out for? Because I gave her 48 hours to come get her stuff, and she didn't come get it, so I threw everything out on the curb. I don't believe that you threw out the TV. I did, along with her clothing. Yes, I did. And I was I was angry. You have a receipt for the TV? I don't have it with me. Bye. You owe her $1,400. We're done. That's not Thank you. Why you excuse me? Step out. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy... I am so happy. I think that she made the right decision. I feel like it was a bad decision. And I'm happy that Jazz got to learn a lesson, lesson out of all of this. And Taki is full of people at the end of the day. Don't turn on your friends and actually be there for people that help you. The whole thing is just stupid. So I just hope that I can pick better friends. Time to go separate ways. All parties in the matter of Grafham versus Descent. Step forward. Contractor Sean Grafham is suing painter David Descent for poor workmanship, vehicle damage, and property damage. Mr. Grafham, you're a general contractor? Yes, Your Honor. In what state? Uh, state of Maine. How long have you had your business? I recently got an LLC this summer, but I've been contracting for 30 plus years. So you've been working in your own business just since the summer? My own LLC, yes, Your Honor. 
prior to that you worked for other people? Yes, Your Honor. One job or more than one job? Multiple jobs. Doing what? An array of things, uh, building houses, uh, doing finish work, remodels, uh, pretty much ran the gamut. So this summer you decided to go out on your own. You took on a project. You took on a project that involved uh, somebody who wanted to flip a house? Yes, Your Honor. Who? Uh, the real estate broker was Greg. Who was the owner who paid you? Uh, the owner who paid me was a Yi. He was the investor. And he purchased it just to flip it? Yes, the... Do you know how much the purchase price was? No, I don't, Your Honor. And you were contacted by the real estate broker, someone who you knew? Yes. How? I had a, uh, a good friend of mine that was a real estate broker, and he had worked with him before. And this was this past summer? Yes. So this was your one of your first few jobs as a general contractor yourself? Yes. Your Honor, at the time... I'm not just a second. I didn't ask you anything. You looked at the job and gave them an estimate. Yes, Your Honor. And what was the estimate? The original estimate was 7500 and then I uh, added some stuff to the scope, and it was 9000 total. And what was to be done for the $9,000? Uh, some carpentry work, which I did, and a lot of painting. Were you paid $9,000 by Mr. Yi? Uh, eventually, when the job was done, yes. But not any more than 9000 No, not a dollar more. Just 9000 Yep. And other than the carpentry work that you did... Personally, mm -hmm. the other work that was done was painting. Yes. And for that, you contracted with the defendant to yes. paint the house. Had he ever done work for you before? Yes, he had. When? Early, a couple months before. There was a Raymond job. There was a uh, central job in Westbrook. Several jobs. And he... Painting? Yes. And how much were you paying him to paint? Uh, $15 an hour. You're in business. How much did he quote you the job would be? For this particular job? That, that's the job. Two, this is the job. $2,000. Yes. Which would give you about a $6,000 profit. Maybe you spent money in materials, but it would give you about a $6,000 profit from the flip. No. There was other people that I hired to help with carpentry. There was other expenses. Oh, just a second. Yeah. How much did you spend that you can prove to me today as we speak here that you spent on carpentry? Judge Judy continues in a moment. I can't rely on you. Show me receipts. I can buy a receipt book in Staples and sign people's names to receipt books and say, here's the receipt book. I don't have a person here to say that's my signature. I have nothing. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Contractor Sean Graffham says painter David Descent damaged the client's house and his work truck. Okay, how much did you spend that you can prove to me today as we speak here that you spent on carpentry? Uh, I can't prove any of that, but I... Well, that, then that, it's meaningless to me that... I do have numbers of the extra work I had to do. I don't care about the extra okay. work. I'm asking you, what proof do you have today that you hired other people, how much you pay them, how much you pay them to do the extra carpentry work in the house? Uh, I have some numbers here, Your Honor. You have some of these? I, I, have, some, I have some labor costs that it cost me to finish well, I, the house. Not things that you prepared. I'm talking about checks that you wrote to people. Yeah, I have... Um, I'd like to see them. Time sheets. You like to, okay. No, no. I don't want time. Not yes, time. You know, no. I say checks, you say time sheets. I say checks, you say time sheets. I understand, I want Your to Honor. See, so let me see the checks of people. I didn't write paid. checks. I paid them cash, and they signed receipts. Great. Okay. Now, so that you were going to make a profit. This is what the case is about. You were dissatisfied with the defendant's work. You paid him how much money? 2000 And you were dissatisfied with the work that he did? Yes. And then you say as a result of being dissatisfied with the work that he did, you had to hire another crew? Yes. And the other crew consisted of how many people? Six people. And do you have checks for those people? Yes. I have actually signed receipts. I don't take signed receipts. I take checks that you write people. Not signed receipts. I don't know who they are. I take canceled bank checks. Do you understand? I That's do understand. That's how you run a business. Yes, Your Honor. That's how you run a business. You pay people by check. They deposit them, especially if you're going to end up in court. Then I know for sure that you actually pay these people what you pay them. I and mean, if you had any additional costs. And if, in fact, the work that he did was of totally no value. Because if you're a general contractor and that's your business, you're supposed to vet people that are working for you. So what you're really suggesting is you didn't make any money on this job, right? Yes. You'll know better. 
That's what happens when you go into a business. You know better. I'd just like to see what you say was the end product of his painting. First, take the picture of the end product of his painting, the house, and show it to me, and I'll show it to him. Okay. I'd just like to look at it. I have several pictures, Your Honor. Should I just pick a couple? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, these were what he left me. This is what I walked into, which he said was 99% complete. The statement's false, Your Honor. Just a second, I'm going to show you what he's showing me. Would you show these to the defendant, please? Did this look like the finished job that you... Your Honor, the job never got finished. Um, so... This is his mudding. All that drips you see there, that's his sheetrock work, Your Honor. It's not paint. Tell me why the work never got finished. Um, so he left, to, he, he left to California, promised me to fly me out to California. Um, the job never got finished because he took half the money. So the money that was left got to a point where it was too much money. To oh, you have not, you're losing me. All right, Your Honor, I'm sorry. I'm just a little nervous. Um, so... How when much, he came back from with, so let's, when start, he, let's start with this. How much were you supposed to be paid for painting the house? I was supposed to get four grand, not two grand. So your total amount was supposed to be four, four thousand, grand, Your and Honor. he paid you two. He didn't even pay me two, Your Honor. He gave me five hundred. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Come on, it's not a way to run a business. If you're used to being an employee and you want to start your own business, then start your own business in an orderly, organized fashion, not looking to cheat the government. Set it up right. Otherwise, you come to court and you're not going to win. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Contractor Sean Graffham says painter David Descent damaged the client's house and his work truck. Did the real estate broker give you any money? I had to go to the real estate broker. Yes, he gave so me So the grand. answer is yes. And how much did the real estate broker he give He gave me a thousand. So that you got 1500 altogether. Yes, ma'am. Did you get any money for supplies? Um, the job, the real estate broker supplied the, the paint, the mud, everything we needed, the wood, all the wood that we needed. So he... He's the one that bought all the supplies. Sean okay. Graffin. Did. So you didn't buy any supplies? Um, I paid lunch for some of the guys. Okay. So all you got from him was $1,500? Correct. And we're talking about a two-bathroom, two four-bedroom, two-floor okay. house. You say you got 1500 Yes. Now. I've seen it out of Now, state. you say you gave him 2000 Yes, Your Honor. I have a now, bank receipt, too, as well. Not my a bank. bank transaction. Not my bank. Am I going to be able to follow? Just I a do. Second. I have the. Just, just a no. Sorry. Uh, follow this. Okay. You say you have receipts from your workers because you pay them by cash. Yes. So you would have receipts from the defendant for two thousand dollars. I'll check the signature Negative. against his. Shh. I'll check his signature on the receipts against his answer to your complaint. Yes. So may I see the receipts from the defendant that total $2,000? Uh, I do not have those because the real estate broker gave him a check, a thousand, we just discussed it. This is the 500 that he said I didn't pay him. Just a second. This is the bank transaction, because I was- I don't want a bank transaction right now. I want a paper trail. I so don't now have you a paper say trail that, David. Now you say that the realtor gave him $1,000. Yes, Your Honor. Great. Now, he acknowledges that, but it would have been smart of you, if you're in business, to have the canceled check from the realtor I, for whom you do business just to show that he got the $1,000. Then all you would have to show me is another $1,000. Your Honor, the realtor has nothing want, to do with this man. I don't want to hear from That's you. That's why I couldn't get it. I don't want right, to hear sorry. from you. Sorry, Your Honor. You're the, following what I'm saying yeah, I to absolutely you. do, Your Honor. The real estate broker would not contact me or take my con. He wouldn't hear me because he was disgusted with the job and how long it took. He wouldn't have anything to do with me. He basically lost that client. Great. He lost... It's unfortunate, he, but it's, it is what happened. Well, and you, you didn't make... Shh, just say, and you didn't make any money, you according to you. But you got paid $9,000. And you can't prove to me that other than the $1,500 that you acknowledge that you paid him, you paid anybody anything. Judge Judy continues in a moment. 
Have you been cheated? Go to judgejudy.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. You can't even show me where you paid him $2,000. Come on. Mr. Honor? Griffin, it's not a way to run a business. I understand if you're your used honor. to being an employee and you want to start your own business, then start your own business in an orderly, organized fashion, not looking to cheat the government, not paying people in cash, and not paying their, their workmen's compensation, and not paying any disability for them, not paying all these things. If you want to do a company in the right way, set it up right. Otherwise, you come to court and you're not going to win. <laughs> That's all. I can't rely on you. Show me receipts. I can buy a receipt book in Staples and sign people's names to receipt books and say, here's the receipt book. Here's the receipt book. I don't have a person here to say that's my signature. I have nothing. I can do that. I can call mm-hmm. a check. Yeah. Goodbye. You're done. The case Thank is dismissed. Uh, Your Honor. Peace. Your Honor. Oh, sorry, excuse me. That's, Step I know out. who Leave I am. I still have the damage on my vehicle, Your Honor. We're done. You can take See you more. later, buddy. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. I left him in charge and he botched it. Yeah, he promised me four workers. I had one worker for half the week. Uh, he did have other workers there. Matter of fact, I paid the other workers. He has no knowledge of time and responsibility. Made a lot worse. Be a man of your work. Don't lie. Where was your car hit? My car was hit on the right corner panel on the side. Okay, whatever it is, the insurance paid for it. If they did, fine, but that's not what the case is about. After you had this collision, you each have a dog, and your dog is it, whose dog is it? Family, family dog. Family dog. Your dog was where? In our yard. Front yard or backyard? Front yard. Is there a grass? Do you have photographs? Yes. Big, big front yard. I'd like to see a picture of Oops. Okay, well, was your dog on a leash, off a leash? Was he on was a off the tr- leash. Off the leash on the front lawn? In the front yard, yes. And after this collision took place, your wife was coming out? No, I had a miniature schnauzer, one of our other dogs, in my lap. In your lap in the car? Yes, ma'am. And? And when Ms. Hernandez pulled back up into her driveway, I just pulled forward and texted my wife to come out. She then came out the side. So you're still sitting in the car? Yes. Holding the schnauzer? Yes. Your wife came out? Yes. Of the side gate. Don't speak. Your wife came out. By that time, and I was step out of the car. Thing. Pitbull. So the pitbull came out of the house, also off leash. Yes. So now your wife opens the door, your dog comes out. Is your dog ever out without a leash? Never. That's not true. What, t- what part of be quiet don't you understand? How old is the dog? Seven. And you've had the dog for seven years? Yes. And never been outside without a leash? Never. So this was the first time. Yes, ma'am. So where did it go? Well, I'm... Where did it... Now it's running outside after its mistress. It's never been out before unleashed. Now it's unleashed. Where does it go? It runs straight towards me and the other dog. Just a second. But you are in the middle of the street. Well, now... Or now you pulled back into your driveway. No, no. I left the car and I just stepped over. You left the car in the street. Right in front of my house. You left the car in the street yes and you were walking towards your wife and i assume your houses are similar you have a front yard and you have right. a double space where you can park your car yes. so you were walking towards your wife towards your driveway no where i was walking across the street towards miss hernandez oh, she parked the car just in the a driveway. second you were walking across the street to her yes holding your my other schnauzer. Schnauzer. yes and where did the pit bull go she ran towards me just a second. She ran towards you, then she was running towards Mrs. Hernandez's house. Yes. Right. And crossed the street. Yes. Unleashed. Unleashed. And? When she got to me. When she got to you, where exactly, I want you to take this photograph and make an X next to where you were in front of Mrs. Hernandez's house. Now, would you take that photograph, Bird, and show it to the plaintiff? And is that where John Mr. Was Hopton was? That's not true. Where was he? Mom, this is when the dog attacked. No. Oh, Listen, no. Pay attention no. to my Did question. Can I answer? Were you, um, just a second, were you there? Yes. 
Okay, then you can answer. I would want to stay around that area, general area, Great. the sidewalk. I'd like so that's to. Correct. Terrific. Terrific. Okay, so your dog crossed the street. Yes. And their dog had been on their lawn. Is what you're saying that there was a dog fight in the street where this ex is? No, they, they were barely on the sidewalk. I didn't know their dog was even out there. I don't there. care what you oh. knew. Is what you're saying that you refer to it as a dog fight occurred around where your ex is, where you were with the schnauzer. You said the pit bull was following you. You were going to Mrs. Hernandez's house. What I'm asking you is don't try to second guess me. You're going to lose anyway. <laughs> you ask me. The is ex this a, is this where, where I'm standing? Well, when the dog you know, ran across the street, that's where I was standing on the X. And where was the dog? Which one? Yours, the pit bull. Well, I was holding one. The other one ran no, you across. you weren't holding a pit bull. You were holding a schnauzer. That's correct. Where was the pit bull? Coming from our no, garage. not coming from. Oh. You said the dog was coming toward you. Yes. That's what you said. That's correct. I said, where were you? Right you said you were here. Yep. Is this where the dog came to? Yes. That's the answer. This is where the dog came to. It crossed the street. Correct. You're paying for her vet bill. What kind of dog do you have? Chihuahua. Mix. When you have a dangerous breed like a pit bull, you're supposed to keep it under control all the time. Not part of the time, all the time. They're dangerous dogs. I assume you have homeowner's insurance. Uh, they, that's either a yes or a no. Yes. And when you put this into your homeowner's insurance... We did never they, Just a minute. Did they tell you that they weren't covering anything that had to do with a pit bull? Never. That's either a yes, don't... Is somebody speaking over there? My wife. She was there. I don't want to hear you. Okay. okay. I'm asking you a question. Did your homeowner's insurance indicate to you that they would not be responsible for this because of the breed of dog you have? Not till July. I don't care whether they oh, said it yes. in Tish above. Yes. Yes. Now, that should give you some clue that courts have upheld the right of insurance companies to disclaim claims for people who have certain breeds of dogs. They don't say it's discriminatory against the breed. They say anyone stupid enough to have this breed of dog, we're not covering any incident that occurs with this breed of dog. Now, your dog happens to be one of those breeds. Can your you sweet, something? wonderful dog that's around your grandchildren all the time. Yes. You want to read a letter from a grandfather whose pit bull ripped off the face of his three-year-old grandchild? I understand, this but this loving is more dog. like Scooby-Doo. It's uh. not like one of those short, you know, dog-fighting dogs. Gotcha. It's not like that at all. I mean, that's a, the image that you would conjure up when you say pit bull, but this is more like Scooby-Doo. Uh, you you're an idiot. Can I see? Can I? Can, can I please see? Can I please the see the vet bill? I just want to see. Oh, that's the homeowner's the letter. Yes. I'd like to see I the. Like I'd me. like to see the vet bill. The please. dog. The, the vet, vet bill. bill. Oh, am I shaking? And the our dog. A picture of our dog. I just like to see the sorry, vet sorry, bill. Sorry. The skin of the vet bill. Is sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm shaking. Oh, here's the other one. I'm sorry. Here's the other. The, um, he had two surgeries. Yeah, this is from your homeowner's policy. They did like a Please months. be advised that our insurance homeowner's policy does not cover a pit bull, full or mixed. Therefore, the policy will not be able to handle your property claim damage. Scooby-Doo. Idiot. Can I interject that we didn't hear anything about the insurance company until she contacted our homeowner's insurance, which was never brought up. She just surmised that... We had homeowners through AAA, and on her own, she contacted AAA to do a third party. And as far as I'm concerned, this is an inflated bill only to cover her mother's deductible. That no, this has nothing to do with this, no, this. This has to do with anesthesia for the dog. It had three puncture, not life threatening puncture marks, that's all. <laughs> this Can I say something? My no. <laughs> My three-year-old beloved grandson is lying in a hospital bed, implanted with an IV, and many other okay. stitches all over his face and chin. The My heart is, is broken. I don't want to hear you. His grandma and I were the last to be called out of guilt. He's the victim of a pit bull attack. This is from a newspaper. 
and it's a letter from the grandfather. Since the babies were born, many heated arguments about the dangers the parents subjected these children to fell on deaf ears. It seems that all of their friends have at least one. At home, the little guy says, Papa, dog bit me. I can barely stand the pain in my chest. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. They nearly all, when defending the breed, call them American Bulldogs or Staffordshires. Every expert says if it looks like a pit, it's a pit. People who allow this should happen should lose their assets and be jailed. They all know altercation is inevitable. <sighs> anyway, this grandfather sent this to me so that I should have it. You want me to read you another one? It's not necessary, but the thing Do is Do you this... understand? Judge Judy continues in a moment. I didn't buy the dog. The dog came to stay for a brief time. And Their never dog left. wasn't a Genevieve, family stop. member until the, she got bit or the yeah. dog would have still been outside. Genevieve. Genevieve. I don't want this, this stupidity. And later today... I understand that she was already outside where she shouldn't have been trying to make a turn. I get that. She gets that too, right? I wasn't far out. I don't care how far you were out. You were out. <laughs> Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Dolores Hernandez and her daughter Christina claim neighbor John Hopton owes for vet bills resulting from a dog attack. Now, I didn't buy the dog. The dog came to stay. It was my son's He's our family dog. pet. When I'm our not... family member. Genevieve, stop. <laughs> I didn't buy the dog. The dog came to stay for a brief time and Their never left. Their dog wasn't a Genevieve, family stop. member until the, she got bit or the dog would have still been outside. I don't want to. I don't want this, this stupidity. You didn't take care of that dog until after it got bit. What are you talking about? It was in the snow and the rain and everything else. The snow. We're in California. Just Judge for the plaintiff in the amount of twenty hundred dollars. We're done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Honor. Well, is our excuse? You may step out. I understand where she's coming from completely. Just unfortunate situation that had happened. I asked her, since you caused the accident, let's just go have a normal neighbor would have done it. He was fifty as fault as I was fifty in fault backing up. But we should be going. Oh, never happen. We should be neighbors without a problem. Ever. It was the principle. It was it's not an official charity charity. Sounds like a petri dish for scammers. A hard-up couple find a savior on social media. My dog was having some trouble walking. I needed money to get new contact lenses. You're two grown adults. You work. Were they really a worthy cause? I don't care if anybody gives me any more money. The problem is that she called me a scam artist. I think you are too. Judge Judy. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheinlin. This is Judge Judy. Stephanie Reinheimer is suing her former friend, Tara Dufresne, for false claims, libel, and defamation online. Order. All rise. It's case number 549 on the calendar in the matter of Reinheimer versus DeFrank. Thank you. You're welcome. Parties have been sworn in. You may be seated. Gentlemen, have a seat. Ms. Reinheimer, what kind of work do you do? I'm a civil servant. Prior to that, what did you do? I was unemployed for a couple of months. Uh, prior to that, I worked at the Whole Foods Market. You're suing the defendant for libel. And it all has to do with some charity something that I'm not getting a full feel for. Now, Mr. Frank, do you say you have a charity? It's more of a gifting group. No, I don't know what you mean by a gifting group. On Facebook, during the holidays, there's often a lot of gifting groups such as this. Like, my child needs XYZ for whatever presents, this kind of thing. It's not an official charity charity, but it is a group within Facebook. Sounds like a Petri dish for scammers. A petri dish. Sometimes people well-intended. My child needs a crib. Baby needs a new pair of shoes. Isn't that what the expression is when you play dice? That's it. Baby needs a new pair of shoes. It's like a recipe for disaster for me. When you say gifting group, are these people that you know or don't know? Some of the people I do know, and on the rules of the group that we vet, some of we vet the people who are requesting whatever they are requesting. <laughs> Super whether heroes. it be... What do you do for a living? I am not employed right now. When was the last time you were employed? That was uh, January 1st. 
of this year. Who were you employed by? People Incorporated. What did they do? They terminated me because I was assaulted by a client. What do they do, People Incorporated? They are a uh, human services organization. And how long did you work for them? Almost two years. Prior to that, where did you work? I worked at Supported Living Solutions. Did you put in a claim for disability from your last job? Yes, ma'am, I did. Did you hire a lawyer? Yes, ma'am, I did. Several. So now you have this Givers Group charity, and your claim is that the defendant told her Givers Group charity that you were scamming people. She told him a lot more than that. And the defendant says that she did, in fact, say to her group, don't give her any more money because she's a scammer. But she said that was true. So did you ask for money from this group or from any group? I did, yes. From whom and when? Uh, there was one incident in which I needed money to get new contact lenses. We were supposed to... Just a second. To... New contact lenses. When was that? That was... I have the paperwork here. Uh, we had actually intended to buy them all the way back in August of... Not um... a we. We don't use contact lenses. That's not a we. You use contact oh. lenses. Um, yes. I had intended to purchase them all the way back in August I don't care what you intended. You needed contact lenses, so you asked other people to give you money for contact lenses. Yes. That would have been... It was... In December. Okay, yes, that we reached. Yes. Loopy. So there was this whole. I back learned something new all the time, right? There was this whole back and forth with the place where we originally intended to buy them. They had. I don't, listen. Yeah. I don't care. They well, they I had never care. given it to care. us. They were supposed to refund us. They never I did. So we had no money for new I don't lenses. So. What's a we? Uh, my fiance and I. He was supposed to get glasses too. We never received those as well. So. You're two grown adults. You work. <laughs> when you get. When you need contact lenses, I assume he works. Yes, I assume yes, he you does. work. If you need contact lenses, you save up, or otherwise you go to the store and you get That's glasses what we did. to use. We went to right. the store. We... I, I'm just yes. curious as to why you would ask perfect strangers to give you money. I mean, it's not as if you were asking somebody because you needed kidney surgery. Well, it was okay. because let's we, move yes, on. We did need them, okay. but uh, they just let's move never on. Delivered them. So. And I see what you. Posted. Um, I the... can't show you what I posted because she blocked me from the group. May I see it, please? And also, she was breaking the rules of this. Uh, don't group. tell me what your rules are for this ridiculousness. Well, this doesn't ask for any money. Actually, this is just complaining about this eyeglass whatever company. This doesn't ask for any money. This is proof that she was given the money. Just a second. But the, uh, her post didn't ask for any money that you just gave me, unless you want to take it and circle where she asked for money. She was just complaining about this company. And she was, and... No, no, no. Just listen. Mr. Frying, do you understand, Bird? Ask her to circle where she's asking for money. It is not on there, but it is assumed that that is what she wants. I don't assume anything. Somebody saw that post and said, I'll pay for the glasses. Give me your PayPal information. There was no request for money. So somebody sent you money. How much did this stranger send you? Uh, $60 for contacts. They sent you $60? Yes. Any other money from these people? From the people for the contacts? Yes. No. When again did you request funds from these uh, my people? dog was having some trouble walking. Dog. His, yes, his back leg was giving him some trouble. Okay, do you have that post, Mr. Fang? So your dog was having trouble walking, you and um, your boyfriend. This is her still active who I assume me. Lives with you, had a, a dog, but can't take care of it. And there are several posts. I'm looking for them now about her dog allegedly getting attacked by the neighbors. Oh. oh, this one actually asks for money for your little dog who hurt his back. Yes. And you don't know what happened. And how much money did you said you needed between sixteen hundred and seventeen hundred dollars? For the surgery, how much yes. did how much <laughs> Did somebody say for that? Oh, they, we started a GoFundMe for that. It's still active. It's still ongoing, but uh, we got a So total. you started a GoFundMe page yes. for the surgery. 
We raised a total of $110. Very good. Do you have any vet bills to show me? Yes, I do. I'd like to see them. I also have saying that she... not also. Just show me the vet bill. Yes. Let's see. That was for the emergency treatment when he got attacked. Stop talking to yourself. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Stop talking to yourself. Just find me the paper. If you hear the lack of sympathy in my voice, you're astute. Oh, yes, yes. This is it. And then um, I had someone offer to help out with that, and I have the conversation that I had with her as well. She did not pay me any funds. She paid the vet directly. How much? Uh, $300. Yeah, I see the vet bills. Or... Thank you. The vet bills that I have here is 300 bucks. Somebody paid the vet 300 bucks. Oh, Do you that have is, any other uh, vet? that was my balance of it. I just want the vet bills. That's it, yes. Well, you somebody paid this vet bill, and then it, you collect... Exactly, Then you yes. have an... I'm speaking, the vet bill was $300. You said somebody paid the vet bill directly, because they probably didn't want to be hustled. And you also have a GoFundMe page that has another hundred and some odd dollars in it. I'm sorry, I misspoke. This is when uh, she contacted, the 300 is what we paid. And then the other person paid, uh, let's see, 500, I believe. I know. Listen to me out there. <laughs> you have nothing to do but sit on Facebook and find places to get soft stories. That's your business. Now, your lawsuit is that she libeled you and she said, don't give her any more money, right? In well, effect. she libeled me about several things. She, in effect, that's what you say. She libeled you. She said, you're a scam artist. Don't give her any more money. I don't care if anybody gives me any more money. The problem is that she called me a scam artist and she... I think you are, too. She threatened I to... Think you, I think you are, too. My dog was injured. I think you are, too. He was attacked by a neighbor's dog. I think Certainly. you are, too. We are low-income people. For which I think I you are, too. We attempted to... Um, you know, have it treated, but the GoFundMe is still ongoing. We haven't raised enough surgery, or enough money for the surgery, rather. You had people give you $600 so far. $600 that you told me about. $110 from the GoFundMe page, and somebody paid at least $500 directly to the vet. And if you're low-income people, you can make an arrangement with the vet to do the surgery, and the vet will say, okay, I'm going to make payments to you. They I'll make payments. I'll make payments to you. Well, if, then if it's not an emergency, it's not an emergency. Because we did but just a second. That with if them. it's not an emergency, it's not an emergency. Now, so your lawsuit's dismissed. I, if she called you, if she said to her, she posted giving my group, work information to tell people to call my place of employment and tell them to try to get me fired. Oh, I'd like to see that. Yes, I'd like to see that. She also posted a picture of my fiance's car. I don't care. I just want to see where she told people to call your place of employment and tell them to fire you because you're a scam artist. Put your hand down. Here we go. There we go. Oh, she says, Stephanie Reinheimer scams. Her employer is on the screenshot. Maybe she's scamming her work like us. Perhaps we should let them know. And then she posted my work information so what? there. That's Kat. Who is this person? That's her. That's her online. That, that's my, uh, my Facebook persona. That's yes. your Facebook? That's not your name? No, ma'am, it is not. Why not? How many Because I have had issues Just with... Just a second. How many Facebook pages do you have? One now, ma'am. And the reason for that is because of people like Ms. Reinheimer. On her public Facebook profile is where her employer is. That is not on my public I, I don't care. Yes. I don't care. That's it not is. defamation. That's not defamation. But she it says is a you're threat. a No, no, it isn't a threat at all. She says you're a scammer. I think that she may be right. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Other than the eyeglasses, the contact lenses, and the dog, any other time that you ask for money? No. That is not true. That is absolutely not true. Who gives you this money? And later today... How many friends is a couple? Two other friends? Somebody that we saw at least around here. One person or more than one person? It was uh, more than one person, like people that came and went. They're not relevant to the story. They're relevant to my story. <laughs> if you've been diagnosed with miscaptioning, is provided by... Real Cases, Real People, Judge Judy.
Stephanie Reinhammer says her former friend, Tara DeFrang, falsely accused her of being an online scammer. Now, she says you're a scammer. I think that she may be right. I am not. I'm not. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I am not. Oh, yeah. You are. And she's saying to her people, listen, she's asking you for money, and it really is uncomfortable that you and your boyfriend have a lot of emergencies other than the eyeglasses, the contact lenses, and the dog. Any other time that you ask for money? No. That is not true. That is absolutely not true. Eyeglasses, contact, and dog. Any other time that the plaintiff solicited money from your group? Mainly for her dog, but not proven. Who gives you this money? People that I know, very kind people that I have met through Facebook and in person. They are wonderful people, some of them. You're unemployed now. Unemployed because your disabilities not come through yet. Correct. And why do you think at your age and stage that you should be receiving disability? It is, it is not disability. It is an employment case for wrongful termination. Because oh, just after... a second. Just a second. That you didn't tell me. You told me that you left your last job because you were attacked by somebody. By a client, yes. By a client, and that's why you left. I said, did you apply for disability? You said yes. Do you have a lawyer? You said yes. Several. But what you have now is what you're telling me. You have a claim against the company. Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. Tell you what, I'm not interested in either one of you. Actually, she's allowed to say you're a scam artist because that's her opinion. I'm not sure I disagree with her. But I'm not sure she's kosher either. So we're done. We're finished. Goodbye. Fair warning out there. If you work hard for your money and somebody tugs at your heartstrings, make sure you know they're legitimate. We're done. What is your excuse? You may step out. I am not a scam artist, neither is my fiance. Sage is indeed a scam artist. I sent her free vintage comic books over the Christmas holiday, and this is how she thanks me. Those things looked like she dragged them out of the trash, and if she would like them back, I would be more than willing to send them back to her. And, and Heather Palin are suing Heather's ex-husband, Scott Manis, for impound fees, harassment, and defamation. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2142, Brown, Palin versus Mannings. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Palin, this is your former husband. That is correct, Your Honor. How long were you married? 18 years. And this is your daughter? Correct. Is this your only child? With Mr. Mannings, it is. Yes. Yes. You have other children? One other, yes. How old? 32. When did you and Mr. Mannings separate? I moved out of the family home in March of 2018. And this is your boyfriend? Correct. I'm going to, in broad strokes, at least try to reconcile both the complaint and the answer in this case. I assume there was a time when your daughter, whose first name is? Trisha. Trisha was living with you after the separation. We had a mutual divorce decree of 50-50. And was that honored? Until September 4th of 2020, Mr. Manis had brought Trisha back to my home. And while we were out of the home, he had her pack her belongings. No, no, okay. Let's s stop there. Trisha, how old are you? I'm 19, Your Honor. Okay. And right subsequent to the separation and the divorce, until September of 2020, you shared custody. Correct. Yes, ma'am. And then Trisha decided she would prefer to live with her father. Correct. For whatever reason, I don't have to go into it because this doesn't really have to do with who she chose to live with or where she was living. It has to do with a car, okay? So while she was living with Mr. Manus, Mr. Manus purchased a car. Yes, ma'am. For her use. Correct. In what month did you purchase a car for her use? Month and year? Oh boy, I believe that was probably February of 2019, I believe, 18 or 19. Well, let's figure it out. It was about six months prior to the, the case with, with her. The when, okay, so September 4th, we had the car. It would have been probably June or July of the same year. So you bought her a car a couple of months before she decided to... Just obtain her driver's to, to, license. That's okay. I'm just trying to get a timetable. Right before she decided to come to live with you and not have 50-50 custody anymore, you purchased a car for her. Correct. And she drove that car in June or July, August? Correct. At your house? 
both houses. She was allowed to go to take the yes, car to their house Correct. when she saw her mother Yes. and then bring it back. Correct. There was a time when you took the car away from her. When was that? Probably mid, mid-August. Mid-August of 2020? Correct. Well, the threat was to take the car away because her grades were slipping. I didn't actually take the car away. When did you take it away? I actually never did take it away. Her mother and her mother's boyfriend decided to purchase her another car to eliminate my threat of taking away the car. Well, I don't know if that's because, but they decided to... Correct. ...purchase another car. And what did you do with the car that you had gotten for your daughter? I sold that. When did you sell it? Probably a month or so after she got the other car. And the threat was made to your daughter because you were concerned about how she was doing in school or how she was doing socially. What were the reasons? Well, her grades this... were slipping. Okay. So I wanted her to concentrate more on her grades rather than... Grades were slipping? Correct, at school. Did she give you any reason for that? She was under a lot of pressure with the divorce. So you purchased a car, Mr. Brown and yes. Ms. Palin, with the understanding, according to your complaint, that the car would remain in your name, there would be payments made on the car, and once the car was paid, it would transfer to Trisha. Well, one thing led to another. Things sort of went south. And according to what I've read in these papers, you got sort of annoyed, and the car that you had purchased was in the physical custody of Trisha, who was living with her father, and Mr. Manis caused the car to be towed and impounded, which caused her out of impound. And he did that maliciously. Correct. And you want him to pay those expenses because you did, in fact, get the car out of impound, subsequently sold it. How much were the impound fees? One thousand five sixty-five and twenty-two cents, Your Honor. Okay. And Mr. Manis, in defense of that, acknowledges that he towed the car, your car. He towed the car, which was at your house. Your Honor, I had. Where, the... just, where was the car? The car at the time was at my house. That's what I'm asking you. The car was at your house. You had it towed to impound. And you had it towed on what date, sir? The car was impounded on September 4th. Of what year? 2020, I believe. And your defense for doing that... Your Honor, he just, requested... Just a second. Your defense for doing that is that you were merely following Mr. Brown's instructions. And the police officers. You were following Mr. Brown's instructions. Correct. Yes, you have a police officer here. I have several police reports, Your Honor. About what? This isn't just about the car. There's several years of harassment. No, no, I'm dealing with the car. I understand. Right now, I'm dealing with the car. So I have the several officers that came instructed us to get the car removed from the property. Well, that may be, sir. You can have the car removed from the property and ask the police to have it deposited in front of their house. I understand. Yeah, you chose not to do that. May I show you his request to have the car towed? He offered a reward for the car to be towed. Just a second. I want you to tell me where I'm wrong so far. See, what we can all do to make her as unhappy as possible. So I really don't understand two people who probably, in their own way, love their child, but hate each other more than they love their child, which, it, to me, is absolutely bizarre. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win Sometimes we try to fit it all in Sometimes we don't know what's in store for Sometimes we're rolling easy and free Sometimes one and one makes three So much to love along this ride That's why Nationwide is on your side Captain. Captain. You can't have her, and I'm taking her home. It's every guy's worst nightmare getting accused like that. Can you guess what every woman's worst nightmare is? Well, at least I won't die alone. Curtis Brown and Heather Palin claim Heather's ex-husband, Scott Mattis, owes for impound fees. 
Scott is countersuing Heather for filing a false CPS report. Okay. You had the car towed to an impound. You did not call him or your ex-wife the day that you had the car towed to impound. It was some period of time later, if the fees for impound were $1,500, your excuse for that is you were merely following his request. His request, that's what you wrote in your answer. Is that wrong? No, Your Honor. Okay, well, so now we know that you didn't notify them when you had the car towed. Your Honor. Because you could have because you could have had the car towed to the local police precinct and called them and said, come pick up the car. It can't be in front of my house anymore. Your Honor, he was wait. actually at my house that just, night. Just a sec. I didn't ask you anything. Sorry. Go ahead. The police, when they came to our house, the car was present. They acknowledged the presence of the car. You can't tell me what the police did, sir. I have the reports, Your Honor. I'd like to see, the, I will see the report. What I'm asking you is, car, out of your custody, and you wanted to quietly and stop the friction, send it back to the people who purchased it, you could have done that. You chose not to do that. Your Honor, the reason I chose not to do that is because of the, I have several false allegations from CPS, the police. I did not choose to have any contact. You don't have to have any contact with them, sir. In order to- You don't have to have any contact with them. Just like you paid a tow truck company to take the car to impound, you pay the tow truck company, you live in a private house or an apartment. Private house. You have the tow truck company drop the car off in front of their house. Now, after you had the car towed to an impound company, did you contact them in any way? No, I didn't. No. I was instructed Did you ask to the, police the police to contact them and tell them? The police knew, yes. I didn't ask you what the police knew. You can't tell me what the police knew. So you had the car towed on September the 4th. And when were you notified the car was in impound? I received certified letter on September 26th, which was a Friday. It said to contact them Monday through Friday between 8 and 4. Just a second. You received that on September 26th? Yes. Is that the first notice that you would had that's that the car was impounded? Correct. That, yeah, that's the Okay. First so now the onus is upon you, Mr. Manis. I want you to prove your defense to me, and your defense was you were following Mr. Brown's instructions. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, that's all I want to see. Here you go, Your Honor. So this says $100 reward to anyone that impounds my car. Call a tow truck and tell them to contact me. Yes, Your Honor. You know this number. Yes. Yes. Well, did you do that? The tow company sent them a letter on 9-10 of 2020, and I have the proof of that also, Your Honor. Yeah, I would like to see what you're looking at. That's not on September 4th. No. That's not on September 4th. 9-10, they sent that out. Okay. The notice. Let's see. Well, this says that attempts were made on 9-21, 9-26, and 10-5. That's what it looks like, attempts that, made. That's when they... Had attempted to deliver. They had notice. They no, they had no notice. Their, they they had no notice. If they would have gone to their post office box, they would have had notice. If I had taller parents, I would have been 5'7". They had no notice. Okay. $1,565. That's what you owe them. It was a malicious act. Your Honor, this isn't just about the car. This There's, is, this is all, listen to me. False this is all, through CPS. this, yes. If you would please. Let me, me, you have a counterclaim. Yes, ma'am. And your counterclaim, I'm going to hear. You. Right now, you owe Mr. Brown $1,565 because what you did was malicious. And I don't understand something. You have one child together. I assume that you don't want to make her miserable. That when she was born, you said, oh, let's see what we can do over her lifetime to make her as unhappy as possible. Let's see what we can all do to make her as unhappy as possible. So I really don't understand two people who probably, in their own way, love their child, but hate each other more than they love their child. Which, it, to me, is absolutely bizarre. So, right now, because you did a malicious thing by having their car towed and not giving them a heads up that you had the car towed to a place that was going to cost them money, you owe them $1,565. Now I'm going to hear your claim that they made false charges to CPS about you. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, oh, can I say something? About what? Um, the car. Before you say anything, did I say anything that was inaccurate? Did your father have the car towed? The answer is he's acknowledged that. 
he had the car towed and put it in a place where neither your mother or her boyfriend knew where it was, resulting in their having to pay fines to get the car out. Is there anything that I said was wrong? That is partially incorrect because I had contacted my mother in the time and asked either. Okay, that's that I'll hear. Okay. You contacted your mother. On normal messages, but also on messenger messages, including how I wanted either the title or my money back and that they could have the car before that. Um, once the Facebook say, post was. All I want you to show me is that you notified either your mother or Mr. Brown that the car was impounded when you notified them. She also did ask my best friend I, where it was. All I want, just as, that's all I want. Don't tell me what she said to your best friend who's not here. All I want to do is see where you notified your mother that the car was impounded. So there is this one about money in my account, which was about the car. I don't want to see anything about the car. I only want to see it where is... you notified your mother or Mr. Brown that the car was impounded. Okay. I don't have the text about okay. that, but I did notify her that it was impounded. Well, I don't know that, and it seems to me you weren't talking to your mother on a regular basis because there was a lot of acrimony. If you have it, you have it. If you don't have it, you don't have it. So, Trisha, you could sit down. I'm telling you that it is inappropriate, the act of sharing a bed with a teenage female child as a father would give me cause to pause. The Pepidou Pepper on Panera's new Green Goddess Caprese Melt. It's a small detail, but when enough of those details are melted together, they become big. New Toasted Baguettes. Cater your next event with Panera. Defendant Scott Mattis has accused his ex-wife, Heather Palin, of filing a false report with Child Protective Services. Now, it was a malicious act to have the car impounded. There's no question in my mind that if they knew it was impounded, they would have gotten it out before. $1,565. Now, you want to show me what information you have yes, with regard to filing a false CPS report. Correct. I have okay. the CPS reports and the police investigators report. Okay. May I see it, please? This report, it was in September of 2020. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's been several years of these reports and Just this disgusting allegations. Shh. Okay. So you filed or you made allegations to Child Protective Services? CPS actually contacted me, Your Honor, regarding um, several calls that they had received for the welfare of my daughter, Trisha. In what year? Um, I was contacted, I believe it was 2019, and again in 2020. They contacted you? Correct. For what? To do an interview because of a claim that was made about regarding Trisha's safety. That were made by an anonymous source? I don't know who made them, Your Honor. In Minnesota, you can't make multiple reports okay. by one person. I cannot call day after day to make reports. I'm just asking speakers. you, did you at some point claim that you had reason to believe that your daughter was being in some way physically abused by her father? I'm... That's either a yes or a no. Yes, to a point. Yeah, okay. And part of that involved a sexual abuse. That one was not claimed by me. Well. I, I did state to CPS that he does have her sleep in her his bed with him. Well, I have to tell you which something. Which is a little I weird. I have to tell you something. That, that doesn't seem a little weird. It seems a lot weird that your daughter... Your daughter acknowledged, sir. Your Honor. Your daughter. Um, what I'm telling you is, it is inappropriate for a man to sleep in the same bed as his 15-year-old daughter. Your Honor, that's we went my to a view. Concert. And if that's true, there may be a reasonable explanation for it. She said she was scared, whatever. But when interviewed, that's what it says in here. But I'm telling you, as a mother and a grandmother, in my view, and I'm not a professional psychiatrist or psychologist in the same bed with her father, period. Maybe some countries it's appropriate, but I... Your Honor, we went to a concert. What? And shared a hotel room at a concert. No, that's not what your daughter said. She no, no, no. That's not what your daughter said, sir. May I finish? Yes. 
when she was going through all the stuff with the divorce and everything, she came into my room. I was asleep. She laid next to me. I'm asleep. Uh, listen to me. You're... I'm not suggesting Donna, that anything inappropriate. inappropriate. Sir, absolutely understand right. this. I'm not suggesting that any inappropriate actions happen between you and your daughter. I'm telling you that it is inappropriate, the act of sharing a bed with a teenage female child as a father would give me cause to pause. I would say, you know what? That's not a good idea. It's especially, sweetheart, it's especially not a good idea when Parents seem to be feuding. It's grist for the mill. You may want to go and, if she's scared, say, sweetheart, I'll go and sit in a chair in your room. Many times. In your room. Many times. But please, this is inappropriate. Do you understand? It's inappropriate. Did you read the detective's statements in there? No, I'm not interested in the detective statements. Obviously. Sir. If what your daughter says is true as a result of the investigation, then there was reason for somebody to suggest to CPS to do an investigation. So, listen, bottom line, I can't tell the two of you to stop feuding. I can't. You either hate each other more than you love your daughter. That's the answer. And this court can't fix that. All I can do is fix $1,565, which is what you owe them for impound fees. This case is over. Thank you. Yeah. This court is adjourned. I think the judge is wrong. I am thankful for the judge. She didn't read all the evidence. Multiple pages weren't read. He's very good at manipulating others. And multiple accusations. And being the person that, oh, pity me, feel sorry for me. False allegations to the CPS. My ex-husband decided that he would show her car. He actually had the car as of August 24th. Then he brought her to the house and moved her out on September 4th. And that's when it all just, it just started going downhill. She has a lot of hatred. I believe he's very angry that I divorced him. That she falls off a bridge. And he lost the control over me that he had while we were married. You know, Sarah, I've been doing these family cases for a very, very, probably 40 plus years. And it always makes me sad that adults, the adults, the mother, mm -hmm. the father, even with the new boyfriend. There is a window in life when you feel relatively healthy, nothing hurts you, you don't have a bad back, you don't have to worry about indigestion, <laughs> you can walk around without a walker, you look pretty reasonable, and that you will take years away from that good time to create negativity around not only yourself, but the people that you love. I think that's great advice. I I always said to people, both men and women, that, you know, it's one journey. You can take that journey and put as much positive energy into it. Yeah, I just felt bad for the daughter. I mean, I know she's grown now, 19, but still, 19, it still hurts your feelings to hear and see that your parents hate each other more than they care and love about you. Well, maybe that statement will make a difference, you know. Will make a difference, because I'm sure it's not true. Yeah. I have a feeling. But when it's said to you in, in a court in front of your child, hopefully they take some action on it then. Well, hopefully they'll say, boing, <laughs> you know. I mean, she has a new boyfriend, and he's got his daughter who's living with him. They should be happy. Yeah. And they're divorced. Close the book and move Close on. the book. Yeah. Her mother and her boyfriend should get a puppy together. <laughs> Well, they should, not, not until, until they, they get married. Get married. <laughs> not until they... <laughs> but do something. This is a grown yeah. young woman. Have a healthy she adult relationship with, with your, your adult child. child. Right. Yeah. Not over... ...is suing her niece, Janelle Laws, and her stepdaughter, Ari Scales, for the cost of a car. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2130, Laws versus Law Scales. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Laws, this young woman is your niece. Yes. And this young lady is the ward of your niece. Yes. You have guardianship over her. Is she related to you? No, she's related to my wife. Okay. But you have guardianship. We both do. How old are you? I'm 21. You had an automobile. Yes. It was an automobile that you allowed your niece to use... And it was at her house. Yes. That was in September of 2020. Her car was in the shop, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
Anyway, your niece went out of town for a while? Yes. Do you remember what date that was? October 17th of 2020. And prior to your going out of town, had Miss Scales ever driven the car? No. Had you ever given her permission to drive the car? No. And Miss Scales, there did come a time in October of 2020 that you took the car? Yes. Tell me how you managed to get a hold of the car. So the keys, we have a key hook in the front of our house, and I just used the keys there. Did you ask anyone? No. Tell me why. I had a scare that I was afraid to do by myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you took the car to go where? To who I was dating at the time. What time of the day did you take the car? Between the times of 4 and 6 p.m. And what time did you have an accident with the car? I would say between 7 and 8 p.m. Had you already seen the boyfriend? No. Where were you between 7 and 8? Where Driving. Were Driving to who? To the boyfriend. Oh, so it takes a while to get there? Yes. How long? About an hour. In any event, you had an accident? Yes. The car was totaled. You had insurance? Yes. And had you told your niece that you had insurance on the car? Yes. Okay. Because she says that you had told her you had insurance on the car and you had a loan on the car. There was a note. That's correct. So when she borrowed the car, she knew it was insured. Did you also tell her that you had the gap insurance? Yes. And what year, make, and model of car was it? A 2015 Mitsubishi Mirage. Did you buy it new or used? Brand new. And how long was the loan on the car? Six or seven years. I think it was six. So by 2020, you had paid up most of the car? Yes. What was the balance left on the car? I'm not exactly sure the exact balance that was left on the car. Um, okay. How much did you pay for the car? I paid $17,000. That's what it was financed. Okay, so you paid seventeen. How much of a down payment did you put down? I didn't put any money down on it. So in five years, between 2015 and 2017, you paid off about 80% of the car? Yes. What's the car worth now? Based on 75,000 miles in good condition, I'm seeing between 5,500 and 7,500. Okay. Now, after the accident, you put in a claim through your insurance. Yes. And your insurance covered how much? The insurance is paid out $7,379. They wrote a check to the bank? Yes, ma'am. And can I see the paperwork on that, please? Yes, ma'am. Because what you're suing for now is another $8,496. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, so your insurance also paid on the other car that you had the accident with. You had an accident with a Ford Focus? Yes. Okay, so they paid $2,900 on that, and they paid you 7379 Yes, ma'am. And show me what the note balance was on the car at the time that they paid this out, which would have been sometime in 2020 or maybe 21. You want the balance after they paid out or before they paid out? Both. Okay. This is after they paid out. And before. I don't have a copy of what it was owed on before the accident. Is, is that they paid you the value of the car, which clearly it was the value of the car, because the value of the car, according to Sarah, is between five and seven thousand dollars. They paid you seventy three seventy nine, which clearly covered a substantial part of your note. Mm -hmm. What the defendant is saying is that during COVID, for financial reasons, you would requested that the payments be put on hold, right. and that you not make any payments on the car, and that the interest would continue to accrue, right. and that that's not her fault. You asked to have the payments put off. But you drove the car. You had the benefit of driving the car all during COVID. Right. And she shouldn't be penalized. The insurance company paid out what the car was worth. These additional charges are because you put off making the payments during COVID, and it also accrued that interest. That's your defense. Am I right? Yes. That I have to see. Okay. I, I don't want to hear it. I want to see it. The paper that you have there that's from... It shows that a payment was made on that car on September 4th, 2020, and that was the last payment that was made. So if there were no payments being made during that time that she had the car, it was. That's not what I'm asking you. I'm asking you, when COVID started, did you yes. put the payments on hold? Option ...to delay my payment, well, which means so you take them on to the end. end. I understand that, but you were driving the car. 
You were driving the car. She's not going to pay for that. She had the car from the beginning of September, and she was only supposed to have it for three days when her car it got doesn't, fixed. It doesn't matter. So, First of all, you didn't bring me. You didn't bring me the documentation that I need. You didn't bring me what was actually owed on the car and what was owed on the car and how much was owed as a result of your deferring payments and interest. When I did the stop uh, payments on the car, it was before she even borrowed it. Well, that may be, madam, but if what you're telling me is you started to pay again. Yes. You still drove the car when you deferred payments. Yes, I did. Yeah, well, that's not her responsibility. But the balance that's left on the car, they pay what the value of the car was. They said that they don't pay finance charges. So there was a balance of well, the finance, Well, the finance charges were finance charges that accrued and you don't have the paperwork not, for me not here. $3,700 worth of finance charge for two months? No, that's not for two months. I don't know what the finance charges were for. It doesn't say that. You don't have the paperwork here. You don't have the right paperwork. So you have to understand something. What you're suing her for is $8,496. First of all, the car is only worth $5,000. You got $7,300 that the insurance company paid directly to the lender. And I don't have what you owed here before the accident. But if you deferred payments prior to that time, that's your responsibility. But I only deferred payments for three months. That's not going to Just a second. to 37 I have no idea. You should have brought the paperwork. This is not that paperwork. So I'm out of a whole car. Like, I've invested almost $10,000 into this car. I let her use the car, and That's she... That's what your insurance for. And now I'm not... I'm just not out only the 3700 Now it's been late charges of, and other charges on that, and now it's $6,000 that's on my credit. You defer the payments. I can't tell how many months you deferred the payments. You said maybe I deferred it three payments. I don't know. You didn't bring me the paperwork. I defer... You can't tell me. If she would have never had the car, then I would have been responsible totally to pay all of that amount. It's cost me more than just this amount that's still on my credit. She didn't do anything wrong so far. I mean, you had the 21-year-old girl who... ...claims her niece, Janelle Laws, and her stepdaughter, Ari Scales, owe the balance on her car after Ari totaled it in an accident. She says you deferred the payments. That was the reason for these overages, which I can understand. Because insurance, which you say you did, would have paid any gap between the loan. My gap insurance is only until, was only until a certain amount of time. And then after that, the gap insurance only pays a certain amount. I don't know any of that. What I need from you, you didn't bring. You brought only what was necessary to, to put forth your position. I need what was owed on the car and for past due payments with accrued interest and for current payments. And you don't have that. So far, all I know is you had full insurance on this car and the full insurance was paid. And if there was a reason that the insurance company, for some reason, didn't pay an amount of money, I don't have an explanation of that here in what you gave me, except the explanation that she offers, which was during COVID, you deferred your payments and the interest was accruing and that the insurance company was not going to pay because that was done prior to that's, October. That's not, 2020. that's not true. I defer one or two payments. Well, I two minutes not, ago, was that three payments? Because ma'am, I'm sorry. Let me, let me just explain that during this time, April, 2020, I lost my mother to COVID. So I had two cars. I had the pink car and I had the car that I gave to my mom, which is a black car, which was also in my name that I was responsible for. The car that I put the deferred payments on was the Kia Optima. That's the one that I put the deferred payments on. This car, I had a couple late payments, but I never stopped paying that car note. I can't tell you. This company paid everything that they were supposed to pay, including the gap insurance for this accident. The gap so I can't help did you. Not pay. I can Listen to me. I'm not going to repeat myself. This doesn't tell me how much you owed prior to the accident and what it was for.
And if it shows that all you owed currently prior to the accident, it had to show that that was 7379 and it included the gap insurance. You may have had old finance fees that had nothing to do with her. The gap insurance never paid. I can't help you, madam. You don't have the right paperwork. If she would have never had the car, then I would have been responsible totally to pay all of that amount. But because I don't have a car, it, it disrupted my life. It's cost me more than just this amount that's still on my credit. She didn't do anything wrong so far. I mean, you had the 21-year-old girl who shouldn't have taken the car keys without permission. But the car was there, and it was there with your permission, and there's no question that the accident I was her fault. I have asking her to return my car. If you have the proof, the only thing I want you to show me is a document from your lender which says how much was owed at the time of the accident and for what. Do you have that? I don't, because I didn't think that I needed it. Okay, well, then I can't help you. That's... Today, the evidence we're done. here. Madam, you don't have the evidence that I need. Your request for $9,000 for a $5,000 car in which you've already been paid $7,300 is ridiculous. So all I have to see is how much was deferred and the interest on the accrued that you deferred while you were using the car before she had it for this five or six weeks that she had it in September. If you have that, I'll look at it. If you don't have it, I'm not interested. Do you have paper? It? The paperwork that you have. Well, then I'm going to give it back to you, and you're going to show me where it shows here in October of 2020 how much you owed on the car and how much were past payments and finance charges based on the last payments. You understand what you gave me? If I could make this as simple as possible for you, if you never loaned her the car, if you had the car for that five-week period and you had an accident with the car during that five-week period, you would be in the exact same position you are now. The company would have paid off what they paid and would not have paid off what you still owe them because you deferred payments. It doesn't matter who was driving the car. And I do understand okay, that. Okay, good. And I'm, glad you're the, I'm, glad, I'm glad you understand I'm glad you understand that. My car. I'm glad you understand that. Your case is dismissed. We're done. This court is adjourned. She needed to borrow my car. It was just a bad accident. It was just me yelping her. You know, so when this balance is due, I'm the one that's out. The car hit me and ran the light and it hit me. You know, I'm the one that suffered. I'm the one that got to pay all of that money. I'm fine. So I don't think that it was fair at all. So for a period of time, let's say six or seven months, her numbers kept changing. First, it was three months she didn't pay. And then it was one or two months that she didn't say. And she may have been late a little bit. Well, the insurance company's not going to give you credit for that. And it didn't look to me, based on the papers, that there was any animus no. between the parties until... Until course, just until right until now. Today. <laughs> and then maybe she should be angry with me and, and not at them. But they all know each other and get along with each other. So that the amount of money she has to pay is the amount of money she should have paid mm -hmm. while she was driving the car but chose to defer. And I think that that's a good lesson about deferring payments, especially now with COVID and everything. I know people my age, 25, around there, have been deferring payments. Please subscribe our channel, please.